uh hope you're doing well today i had you muted that whole time so ditto what do you think is oh uh, come on man <laughs> i know i'm the worst i'm the actual worst i'm so sorry i'm so sorry it's Look it's fine him. I'm sorry. I I'm, finally I bust my way into a competitive stream, and this is the treatment I get. <laughs> you know what? No, that was the intro. That's the intro. The Right there was the Fair. intro. Don't worry about it. Nothing else happened. Um, how are you doing? Also, give me your opinion on uh, competitive Disney villainous as a whole, because I definitely didn't ask you that already, and you weren't muted. So let's <laughs> let's, let's run that back. No, uh, I'm doing pretty well. Uh, thanks for checking in. Uh, competitive villainous, I don't play super competitively myself but i know a lot of people like to and i think there's a lot more competitive depth in this game than the average player realizes makes sense uh what is it uh is there what do you have a favorite villain in uh that you enjoy playing um it tends to oscillate between pete and syndrome and i'm allowed to say this now oogie boogie there you go. Um, <laughs> Wait, what, what do you mean you're allowed to say this? Are you saying you're a tester of some sort? <laughs> I'm saying I might have known about him a couple days in advance. Oh, okay. Um, interesting. Interesting. Okay, but, so you've got some insider knowledge. I may have one or two things. Sweet. So can I? So am I allowed to ask when Jafar is going to be added to Disney Villainous? Because that's what everyone's been waiting for. Oh, you know, it keeps coming up in discussions as far mm -hmm. as when exactly we're going to find a place for him uh, mm. in the roster. And we just haven't found really a good collection of other characters to include him with. You know, there's got to be a really solid theme to the character to really get him in. And Jafar just kind of stands out a bit too much from everybody to really find a spot. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah. No. I, I get that. I get that. I feel like it, there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff who you want to uh, you want to make sure is specific uh, with this. Exactly. That makes sense. Okay. So, are you? Uh, uh, what is it? Are you excited? To, what do you know about the uh, players? Have you have you seen any any of the games they've played so far, and or like any of the stuff they've uh, done yet? I have largely managed to keep myself, with the exception of the. Uh, last Wicked League stream largely blind to what the competitive people have been up to. Okay. Um, just, just, just because mm -hmm. it's, it's not a, competitive stuff is not usually my cup of tea, but I like dipping my toes in sometimes. So yeah, that makes sense. I'm, I'm very curious to see what happens here. Yeah, it's going to be exciting. So the first the first matchup that we have today is going to be uh, we're going to be uh, seeing Wonderful versus Jim Dandy. I'm very excited about this. Uh, I think they're currently ready and inside the game. So we'll actually jump over there right now and we'll give them the go ahead to start off. And uh, we'll talk about their stats potentially a little bit later on. We're getting into a lot of this very first week. We don't have a lot of history on a lot of these characters, on a lot of these players. Um, and it's I'm not really going to focus on that here today, though. But let's actually go into the legitimate <laughs> game um let's do it so uh we have yeah so i think it's going to be uh wonderful on the left jim dandy on the right and uh you guys are good to go i'm gonna throw that in chat uh and i'll be uh was i'll be recording their form as well over here on the side um i'm excited to see what they do uh so do you know so how much do you understand of the current uh draft system that we're doing this season in the league um is it not a effectively reveal is it five random ones and then you kind of pick and choose and ban from those five Did uh, yeah, i understand that's, that's, the conversation exactly correctly works. so this this first <laughs> bit is going to be um what was it uh what was it the first bit is uh what you'll see who is first pick and second pick first slash oh. second pick incredible first reveal i do like that interesting <laughs> all right yeah we immediately have mim hades uh so what happens with the dice roll is that the winner of the dice roll gets to choose between first and second pick. Uh, first pick gets to, uh, what is it? First pick is typically going to be going first, uh, whereas the uh, second pick gets to choose which villains they're going to be banning and whatnot. So uh, Jim sense. Dandy, it looks like his first pick here. Uh, and we have uh, wonderful as second pick. So they have these. I, I these can't wait options. to see which one they ban. So here's the thing. They do have <laughs> I a wonder who it'll be. They could choose to just reset the flop here. I mean, the funny thing is, only one of these characters really stands out over mm -hmm. the others. The rest of them are all actually kind of on the same plane. 
Which plane? Where, where are you saying that plane is? I'm interested because I don't know if I agree with that entirely. Uh, well, okay. So around the same plane, uh, Mim is the outlier, obviously. Yeah, Mim's a bit um, of an outlier, but I don't. And what typically? Okay, I have this opinion, right? Okay, okay and they're, they're getting so, shuffled yes. anyway. That's perfectly fine. Yeah, so they're gonna redo it. But, Honestly, I don't like it because I will say, even though I do think, um, I got it. I got it. Uh, what is it? Uh, I do. I do think that what you want to do is you want to have at least a group of four that you feel like you can de have decent matches and uh, against right. yeah. uh, or as or whatever that may need to be. So I don't mind this uh, redrafting here. I think I would probably do something similar if, uh, if given that same uh, choice. Yeah, it's an interesting set of characters that we had there because mm -hmm. Radigan and Gaston exist in a pretty good place, I think. Gothel and Hades are the tricky two, mm -hmm. but I think the right hand of two, like in the right hands, those two could actually pop off. Yeah, that's fair. No, that's definitely fair. And here we see two of them uh, make their reappearance, so it was destined to be. So this clearly. feels, honestly, I like this a bit more, obviously. I think here. so, yeah. The outlying characters are not as cripplingly outlier. Yeah, I would agree. I think the out like because so if you if you were put in the situation and you, let's say you get the choice of okay so you ban one then your opponent gets to pick one then you pick one then your opponent picks one you're left with the last one right. who do you who in your opinion do you ban here? Um, that is a really hard question for me mm -hmm. because to give context to everybody in chat who is like new to me in Villainous, uh, I've been around since the be I was here for season zero of wicked league so okay. i've seen all of it go down and pretty much all of these characters at one point i would have considered a ban makes sense yeah even cruella i will say I, I i think i i think i would disagree personally with that cruella pick here i don't know in the long run i mean the real answer depends on is probably generally facilia is the one you ban but in this instance I, would I, I don't mm -hmm. know like how comfortable I am saying one of these two probably play Cruella a lot. Mm -hmm. And Cruella is one of those characters that in the right hands, you'd be surprised how, uh, how well they go. Yeah, it makes sense. Uh, no, I think I, I personally, I think I would have banned Mother Gothel here just because I always feel like she's... Yeah. I feel like she's the potentially the weakest character uh, in this. Uh, yeah, I, I would too. And there's been a couple of seasons, especially it was what, season three, where there was a lot of really good Gothel players yeah. that kind of put her on the map as a character, mm -hmm. just in general. And no. so I think a lot of people have finally learned how to be scary with Gothel, so I could definitely see it. Yeah, it, she's one of those that um, I think legitimately is not like, I don't think she's bad by any means, but I think that, I think that many people aren't familiar with her, and more often than not, they are overly confident in going for her in that situation, personally. I think that occurs a decent yeah, amount. That's fair. But I like this here, so we do well, have... on the other side of that coin is just the number of people that don't know how to play against Gothel. Yeah, that's fair. No, yeah, and there so are definitely a good chunk of people who don't. get to a point of, like, underestimating how she functions. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, I like this uh, intro rule start here. Yes, that is... Uh, so we are doing that as well. Uh, we are doing the intro rule in which you get... Everyone starts off with two power, and you start on your portrait. It is just simpler in that situation. Um, it's... As well, one of the, one of the things that I think we've always I think we've done pretty consistently in uh, the what is it in uh, what is it called inside of Ra inside of the Wicked League is that I think we're willing to try this stuff out and even if it doesn't work we're okay with that we're will we, we're willing to test it is what I mean and I think that's right. that's something that I very much enjoy about uh, the way and this that is the best format to test something like it yeah. no I would agree yeah. Uh, so it looks like we're actually Radigan is choosing to go first here, uh, which does mean that uh, Facilier is going to shuffle back uh, 
in their uh, hand into their deck. Uh, but this is going to be interesting. We'll see how this goes. Um, I'm excited to do this. So yeah, one of the other benefits that we also have in this is that we're using the mulligan. Um, what is it? We're going to be using the mulligan. I love TTS. Definitely not broken at all. Yay. Uh, what was it? So we're going to be using the mulligan that they did instead of Lorcana, in which case uh, they get to uh, discard uh, their hand and then they shuffle that immediately into the deck. Uh, and they're starting off. So we got uh, Radigan going over to Buckingham Palace. Uh, Wonderful is going to be gaining that one, playing tools. Um, do you want to real quick fill everyone in on what Radigan's objective is as we see him take his first couple of setup turns? Yeah, sure. So Radigan has the most interesting goal in the game because it has the potential to change. So at the start, for the bulk of what he's trying to do, he's trying to find the Robot Queen and move her from the secret layer over to Buckingham Palace. And if she happens to get discarded along the way, then he'll have something else to do later. So it'll be interesting to see if we make it that far mm -hmm. with the with, with the second hand there. Um, I feel really bad for this Radigan getting two hero cards turn one. <laughs> That's Potentially, not something yeah. you want to see. Yeah. So uh, he did play Juju, and immediately we saw Dr. Facilia get rid of Juju with Masked uh, Spirits, which is a very, very strong, but also potentially downfall of an of an ally slash item. Basil immediately getting rid of the oh, tools there. So, instant uh, Basil is an interesting So situation. if you guys don't know what those cards do, uh, tools uh, allow all of your items, and Radigan has a lot of those, to all cost one less, whereas Basil discards an item when he's played or moved from his new location, and just immediately hitting the tools without Radigan being able to get any value off of those uh, really hurts. Speaking, you really hate to see the investment there. Speaking of what's currently going on uh, rough for Radigan, in terms of how Dr. Facilier actually wins the game here, Dr. Facilier needs to have a card called the Talisman under his control, which every single time a hero with a strength three or less is played, it'll go to that hero, and you have to defeat that hero before you can have it back. He needs to then play a card card called Cards Will Tell while he's at the leftmost location, while another card is inside of his fortune pile, which is a separate whole thing, that's he's he's complex a lot in that way. Okay. Golly. Radigan pulling out a devious, which makes it so only one fate card is revealed, and then Mouse Queen is go is over at the Buckingham Palace. That's not what you like to see. What an absolutely crippling early set of fates Radigan's been dealing with here. Yeah, that's, that's like rough. That's like the two worst things to get, and you get them back to back. Yikes. Mm -hmm. The consolation prize here. For mm -hmm. Radigan is that it's very easy now to just set up to try to defeat the Mouse Queen and mm -hmm. be relatively safe in his first objective. Yeah. Um, which is a kind of the con like I said, the consolation prize to getting this really unfortunate one two punch. Yeah, that's totally fair. I will say that's a very solid bit of setup right there for the ruffians. Uh, what is it? The ruffians, uh, oh, yeah. whenever Radigan, if they're played to a location other than Radigan's, they actually allow Radigan to uh, perform any action uh, at that location as long as it's available. And then we got to and then he, uh, he was able to use that to get three extra power, basically playing them for a bit of a discount and then uh, perform a fate action to throw Louie over at uh, Voodoo Emporium. Rough stuff for. Yeah. And that's not a good place for Louie to be either. No. But Radi or not Radi, sorry, but Dr. Slade does have the tools for it. Oh, certainly. Yeah. Oh, that's one of the uh, tools that he the, has. There's the cane, yeah. Cane is such a powerful item. Uh, the cane, if Dr. Slade is at that location, you, uh, what is it? He may perform an available action at uh, an adjacent location other than a fade action. Very strong. Card. Yep, and the early juju on the first flip means that cane's actually a completely safe card for a long time. Yeah, that's true. So that's just uh, a lot of free power and a lot of free discard that's going to be on the table for a while until you need to get ready to go in for it. It's just background vibes, by the way. Just background vibes. Um, yeah, and then uh, it looks like we do have uh, Radigan going over to Flavershims uh, to yeah, gain that ruffians, you like to three. See it. Yeah, you want to, putting ruffians. You don't again. You do not want to play ruffians at your location because if you do that, then they you can't perform uh, the action there. Yeah. But just playing um, them over there for the one power discount is a nice uh, prep for dealing with the Mouse Queen. Extra gears are always nice. 
Yep. Um, <laughs> he he used the, I believe, the gain one power action. And then also yep. uh, yeah. how, how gears work is that when Radigan plays an item, he may discard a gears from his realm in order to make that item's cost reduce by three. And you can stack that because the ro robot queen, which he needs for his objective currently, uh, cost three. So it's a lot. Cost three. Oh, sorry. Cost 15. Sorry. My bad. Right, Thanks. Yeah. No, Robot Queen is expensive. Like, easily the most expensive card in the game. So, yep. Radigan having such a good set of tools to get those discounts. Not the tools, though. Really helpful. Not the actual tools, no. No. Um, Interesting. So, this is a decision that has to be made here. Um, whether to use the balloon or not. So, he's, he's, looks like he's no. choosing not he's to. He's choosing not to use the balloon. Interesting. Now, let me ask you a question here. Um, I, I, it does remove the, it, it opens up top fate, which I think is a bit of a problem. But other than that, do you think it's an interesting, a uh, good idea to put the makeshift balloon on the mouse queen? Considering that we do know that both of the marvelous traps are in the discard power right now. They are. And that actually would make the mouse queen really, I think there's some merit in using balloon on the mouse queen there. Yeah. Um, Honestly. Evening star anti, oh, Tiana can hurt. Ooh, Tiana. Okay, now things are getting spicy for Facilier. That's rough. So Tiana, uh, what is it? Uh, Tiana's ability is all of Doctor Facilier's card uh, card costs are increased by one power, and that's while she's out there. So that's rough. Because now Facilier has to make a decision who he hates more, and that's a tough call to try to make. I per I'm gonna, th I'm gonna throw it out there. I feel like you go. I feel like Tiana's worse here. Oh, Tiana's much worse. And with but the cane, you can do you can set up a certain amount of vanquishes so that you don't actually ever have to like uh what is it? Because of the uh cane allowing you to perform actions at adjacent locations, you've got some benefit there. You you could like the trick with Tiana though is Tiana Like had mm -hmm. Tiana I understand why putting Tiana at the parade, sure. Putting Tiana a bit further away where it's harder to get the vanquish lined up would have yeah. been a really tight spot. Yeah, no, I kind of agree with that. Like placing it potentially over at the top, uh, the top, the uh, what is it, the bayou? Yeah, the the bayou for the t taking the double play away is good because facility has got a cheap deck. The double play and know. that move, all rough yeah. stuff. Okay, this is this is an interesting arrangement here. Yeah, it is. You got Radigan getting a discount on his. Uh... <laughs> On yep. his power gain, getting those, get, getting that item back. Yep, he did um, get tools back with extravagant, um, and we see another shadow spirits here, paying three okay. power for that. Oh, that hurts. Three for three is a lot. Yeah, that hurts a lot there. What? Oh gosh. What else do you do the here? Question is, is how how is Facilier planning to? I mean, if I'm Facilier right now, and don't this forget is to move the cane. I feel like you move Cain to the left, to and then you go to, you, you go, to. you go to the, what is it? You go to the streets, I believe is what it is. Yeah. It's and then you would be able to vanquish. One of the two, yeah. No, yeah, don't forget to move the Cain, man. It's two. That's the end of the actions. So he can't do any more actions at this point, so he has to finish the sleight of hand, and that's going to be it. He cannot move the Cain now. It's too late. Oh, that's, I mean, he can still move the Cain at the parade next turn anyway. Yeah, he has to do it next but turn. But that's but not he's... a situation you want to get locked into. Not at all, no. And discarding both of those is rough there. Discarding, yeah. uh, it's already it is already Wonderful's turn at that point, and that's why we have the timers. By the way, it's you got to keep it. You got to keep those in mind. Like that's uh, it's 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 yeah, needed. And for a character like Facilier, like Facilier does have a lot of stuff he's trying to do at once. Mm -hmm. So yeah, he's a big reason the timers kind of need to be here because you could sit for a while, yeah, letting him puzzle his situation out. You think the dolls slash Louis are more important to move than Kane right now? Yeah, that's a fair play. It would be a fair idea for that. That's the reason I I I think Kane is because you go over to the parade where you can still vanquish Louie and you don't have to worry about Lou like you're here where you have your allies set up. You don't take any uh L's on that. Uh did he wait, I'm sorry. How did he do that right there? What what did I miss? How did he Um How did he do that? I was paying attention. Was at that location for a while. No, no, no. I'm sorry. No, we uh Mouse Queen was defeated. How did that occur? Was it a uniform? That's not enough. Str is Mouse Queen? Yeah, it was oh, Mouse uniform, Queen's only yeah. five. It was, it was uniform yeah. and Bartholomew and a ruffian. Mouse Queen's only five. I, I thought she was six. Okay. 
No, that works. No, yeah, she is a little weaker than she looks, which is yeah. weird because there's a lot of high strength heroes in Radigan's deck, and you mm-hmm. like you would think she would match with everyone else, but she kind of doesn't. You know what? It's it's um, it's that asymmetry that I really enjoy about a lot of these characters. For Ooh. Sure, yeah. So big, uh, big daddy LaBeouf or mama Odie here, big daddy LaBeouf allows you to choose a card in a fortune pile and put it back on top of, uh, Dr. Celia's, uh, villain deck. Whereas mama Odie is just like a constant negative, And I feel like Odie here over at the Bayou feels good. Well, she's a constant negative. So long as Facilier is actually ready to use or to tell mm-hmm. <laughs> until he's ready for that though. She is basically just sitting there covering actions. That's fair. Putting it over um, at the what is it? You want to make you want to get that extra covering of the fate location. Not bad. I like that move idea. Move the cane. Yep. Cane to vanquish. Okay, cane to vanquish. Tiana. Tiana, Tiana first. Makes sense. I part of me kind of want wanted to recommend getting rid of Louis first instead. I don't know. Well, so there's a strategy here that I think. Oh, that is really unfortunate to see now that uh, Big Daddy's gone. Oh, gosh. Um, okay. <laughs> so Rural New Orleans is one of the cards. The, the, if I mentioned the specific card that he needed to be able to win, that's that card. Yep. Um, now, the strategy here is that if you move Louis to the parade, uh, you're not under as much pressure to try to defeat him because you'd basically be going to that location just to discard anyway. Um, so it's not as yeah. bad uh for louis to be there versus blocking that vanquish blocking that vanquish is really unfortunate yeah blocking the vanquish is not helpful here what are we gonna see um, what's radigan gonna do here radigan um it looks like wonderful wonderful's trying to figure out what he wants to do as radigan rat's in a tough spot like nothing has gone well for him so far yeah dawson especially right now like dawson i feel like is an underrated hero inside of radigan's deck that typically you don't think about but basil sits on the board for a while and dawson hurts as soon as basil's out which is again the majority of the right. game now the the early basil was the thing that really kind of set the scene for demise here that's fair because so i want to v- real quick verify it, uh, so he played uh radigan p- played ruffians to use the play a card action to play greatest criminal mind to gain two power Cycling through his deck a bit more in order to find that robot queen. Effective use of those actions. Sorry, go ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Oh, 100, 100% effective, especially when Doc is practically uh, threatening a win right now. Mm-hmm. All it would it would not be difficult for him to open. There's the cane at uh, <laughs> at the Emporium. Yep. If we oh um, boy, how much does he? Uh, so wait, so tools. We have two gears. Um, two gears of six tools and is then se- seven. seven so that's still it so would still be eight still power so one he, short so if even if even if radigan did have the robot queen here he couldn't play her i kind of feel like again you need to keep that fate pressure on i'm kind of feeling if i'm radigan here i go over to the left location potentially even if i don't play it i try to play something out of my hand probably another greatest criminal mind gains in power another gears to reduce the cost or you go over and then you go over to Big Ben next turn to try to start moving your uh, robot queen over because you need to do that quickly. Yeah, and it's really unfortunate that that's had to happen here too because I would feel a lot more comfortable as Radigan if I actually had royal robes there of all things. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, Greatest Criminal was... Mind is the same it's... practically. Yeah, but uh, I, it's, I it's, it's a little better that... actually because it puts you at nine power. Um, but I will say, so it he, does, he doesn't have Marvelous activate. Trap. He doesn't have Marvelous Trap yeah. anymore. Because Marvel's Trap is actually in the discard pile. He was uh, he discarded both copies. I believe there are only two. Discarded both copies right off the beginning. Yeah, but that having to go to the secret layer and not get to use that activate is really unfortunate. Yeah. No, the activate is. I feel that's like it's a, one. That's okay. a huge loss in time. Almost there is kind of nice though. You, I think it's actually okay. Here's the thing: if you play your door over to the parade, you can't win. The, uh, Doctor Lee can't win this turn. I think you need to do that right here. You don't want to put well, more cards in his deck. He doesn't have the talisman either way. No, he but so he can with the cane very... at the left location. This is true. So I don't I don't like this play. It's a decision for sure, but mm-hmm. I could see the merit with Mama Odie in play, just filling yep. the fortune deck up enough for it to just be an unlikely pull is not bad. That's fair. Let's Especially see what happens here. since. Louis means that he's going to lose something here. 
So his he's hand is revealed. Cards with... Oh, he does. Oh, yeah. he has the perfect hand. Oh, that's rough. Wow. That's rough. This is why wow. I didn't like. This is why I didn't like it. This is this is what I was thinking. This is what I was thinking he was going for. That's unfortunate. Oh, you he's did... going for the. Yep. He's going oh, for no, the this could be kill it. too. This could be. Oh, it right it's here. over. Oh, it, it's over. I called it. I said oh, it. You needed to. Boy. You need to play your door to the to the parade to block off that top player card because then the cane oh, couldn't use it. That was a beautiful setup. Okay, now here's oh, the thing. Man. So now there are six cards currently it inside could. of the fortune pile. There is it's about a 50, 50 50 percent chance, and technically, according to the rules, Yodora did only a delay one turn. That's fair. Oh, but man. Uh, yeah, let's see. Wonderful gets to choose. It's oh, just this top could three. Be terrible. Oh, I think it's good. Oh. Oh, you had to go that for it. That's a good. Really close. So there are three cards we'll tell, by the way. And if I'm not mistaken, yep. two of them currently are in the discard pile. Only one is in the hand right now. So that's actually really solid for uh, yep, and for Radigan. Ra only downside is Radigan's got a long time to wait before he gets the chance to steal the talisman. Yeah, that's true. He is, it's two turns, which is going to be very unfortunate. Yeah, the almost uh, there was the right call. Yeah, no, that was. But yikes. <sighs> No, that's that fair. was you know. <laughs> that's one of those moments like uh, competitively really just kind of getting right up on that line. Mm hmm. Yeah, it's two turns until Doctor can take another another attempt. But by that point, oh, we are seeing. All right. So we're seeing There's the Robot the queen. queen. This is what I like to see this Ooh. currently. So by moving Robot Queen, by the way, over to Flavorstrom's toy shop, it actually does mean that. Uh, what is it? And that was currently at six, seven. Uh, and I don't remember how much power he was at before. I want to say he was at 9-11. I don't think he spent anything yet. So if I'm not mistaken, he needs to be spending uh, uh, 7 here? Or 8? I think they're trying to do the math right now. I can't do math either. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's 8. It's 8. It's 8. Um, I mean, it's fine either way. Yeah. Yeah, but here's the thing. Robot uh -oh. Queen over at uh, Flavorsham's Toy Shop does mean that if Basil is moved, he cannot... Uh, what is it? He can't get rid of the Robo Queen. So a fate here yeah, wouldn't... Yeah, no, this is the best situation for Radigan after that yeah. bombshell of a turn. Exactly. So and this with is one Mouse of those... Queen gone, mm -hmm. like, this is... Rat is basically inevitable at this point. Yes, that's true. Just a matter true. of how Rat chooses to go out. Stealers don't matter as much to anyone who steals the Talisman because of uh, Larry. Here's the thing, what I think you need to do as Radigan here... There's, I think I still, one or two almost there's left in the deck, as well as Charlotte. What you, Best case scenario, oh, you just I put one Mass Spirit. One almost there left. If you just put one Mass Spirit in the, in the fortune pile, that's it. It's enough, certainly. Yeah. Do you like Queen's Guards here? I feel like you play Flavisham. Ray yeah, could be yeah, great, too. Flavisham, yeah. yeah. Ray he, could be good, the too. Thing, the flexibility in getting to pick Flaversham's location is the only thing that makes him better here because yep. his ability. Oh, this is what matter. I love to see. This There's is good. There's the airship. Yeah, that was what I was expecting would be the play. Yeah. So. Um. Oh my gosh, a ray, ray is so good here. Yeah, you throw ray as far yep, away as so possible. Ray steals the talisman. Yep. Now you literally you have to hope you can you only put in. Mass Spirits here. I don't think you overfill the deck. Like, that's a 50-50 yep. shot. I don't like that. Unless, you get, again, you don't get Mass Spirits, fine. But other than that... Well, I mean, like, here's, I, the, yeah. here's the question, is... Facilier now has to make the incredibly hard call of... Uh, well, actually, no, it doesn't that's matter. That's it. That's it. Don't put anything else. Over. No, I don't over. like that. I don't like it. I don't like it. Here's the thing. The you game's put more over cards. anyway. Facilier can't fake. No, but he, he can still win. He can still try to win. Here's the thing, though. I don't oh, like overpunning. Yeah, but he just uses Vanquish. He has Lawrence. Maybe so. Oh yeah, I forgot Lawrence was there. Too. This is this I is why I don't. Earlier. I don't think. I personally don't think you should play Shadow Spirits and the and uh, put the friends on the other side in there because that's now a higher chance you miss the Mass Spirits. Right. You miss the Mass Spirits, but it's a higher chance you miss Rule New Orleans too. So I like. There are six cards it's currently inside of there. Oh, but again, he was going to put a card in here as well now. I feel it's just, it, it's just clogging right now. Yeah. I mean, you have to go for the win because he, this is yeah. his only chance. Uh, so like, it, it's not an option. You have second, to go sorry. for the cards of hell. Uh, to answer the chat question, there's seven cards in the fortune pot. Uh, at least one of which is a mass spirit. I don't think there's two of them. Uh... This is going to be interesting, but you have to do it. 
Radigan wins regardless. He's playing a frog form for the free kill. That is correct. You just got to take it. If one of these is ruled New Orleans and there's no mass spirit, then Facilia eked out the closest win I've ever seen. Yep, that's it. That is it. That is a surprisingly good... But that just goes to show you guys, Rat was in a miserable position at the start of the game and still uh, was at victory's gate. Uh, so the, the turnaround on Radigan is incredible. Uh, just going from 0 to 100. But no, no, Facilier, Facilier did, did, did a really good job. That was very, very good luck at the end. Not bad. Not bad at all. Very, very solid game one. Very stressful game one. Uh, for sure. Hi, I'm sorry about that delay. Uh, I'm I'm back now. I'm assuming that was it right there. That was the game. That was it. Yeah, he pulled it. Yep. He pulled it off. That's unfortunate. Very um, very good luck, but it just goes to show how easily he... Radigan can. Why turn is a this? Game. Okay, this isn't messed up. I'm gonna fix these. Hold up. This is bothering me. I like to have everything the same lane. I do that <laughs> very purposefully. I do it very purposefully. This is. It's almost like it's almost like I I have exact places for the selectors. Sorry, I had to go. Um. Act, outside outside info uh what is it my my dog's been going through some fun stuff he's been going through surgeries and i have to i had to make sure that he was okay because it's fun stuff uh was it did, i'm assuming facility won that by the way sorry he did there you go it's unfortunate he but you see it clutched it on the best cards will tell i've ever seen dang there you go well um yeah. i missed that but that's on me but thankfully y'all didn't miss it um nope. we're we're seeing this go back in jim dandy throwing a star on the right of his name make sure he's got that and we're gonna keep going with this then uh let's see how this is gonna go captain hook immediately starting with that two power very captain good for him. hook starting with two power is very nice and this is classic hook too yeah uh speaking of actually hook uh his objective is fairly simple you need to find a card in your deck called uh uh what is it the i believe it's Ooh, wait, wait, what's what's the map called? Neverland map, I think, right? Yeah, it's Neverland map. Yep, the Neverland map. You want to find the Neverland map, and you need to play it to unlock the Hangman's Tree, as well as you need to find Peter Pan, who's currently inside of your fate deck. You don't know exactly where. There you go. Ooh, double well, gears Hook, for Radigan here is good. Classic matchup, Hook and Radigan. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. We have both of... Oh, wait, no, um... Oh, he used a play a card. Oh, wow. That's a, that's playing, a really effective playing use. Playing for extra gears is really good, yeah. That's an effective use of everything. He should have one more power. He should that be is a, a very safe move. That's good. That's You love that. You love to see that. Yep. Okay. And it's a very safe move off of what wasn't the best starting turn for Hook. Mm-hmm. Getting shoehorned into an early fate as Hook is not the best case Cause, scenario. Because Hook went first, right, by the way? Uh, yes. Hook yeah, that, yeah, that's not good to see. All right. Um, Hook, Hook is somebody who wants to be playing aggressive for most of the game, so having to play that defensive right from the get-go is not a good place. Yeah, and Hook especially loves the mulligan, and so it's smart by... Yep. Uh, Smart by Radigan, smart by Wah. Wonderful to make a point to not give him that. Most certainly. All right, what we got here? 
We got uh, going over to Big Ben, moving those ruffians over just so they can potentially defeat the Queen's guards. You going to play another ruffians? What are you thinking here? Not just some more gears. gears. Interesting. <laughs> that's a lot of gears. That's can be a very quick. That could be a really quick robot queen. It could be a quick robot queen, but it's also a tasty target. Mm hmm. Yeah. And Hook being able to set up effectively with these pirates is great, too. Yeah, that the one consolation prize Hook has here, just that his ability. Oh, no. Hard Ooh. flip Basil. I don't. I mean, honestly, Basil's not horrible here. Nope. Like, that's but again, that, we're like, in the situation just like last time where it's a really early Basil. And that's just not what you want to see. To be fair, though, I don't mind it hitting just uh, just the gears. I really don't now, mind that Especially with this many gears early on, still mm -hmm. a very solid hit. Because yeah. those gears can be used to discount anything, not just the Robot Queen. Yeah. No, like, I... Those gears could just have easily been pivoted into a free Marvelous Trap. Yeah, true. Uh, and he, he used Greatest Criminal Mind, by the way, to draw two cards right there. Effective use of that. I like that. I mean, you have to uh, with Radigan. Um, ooh, I love seeing capture capturing used. the queen's guards, huh? That's all right. That's only it's one power and you stop the guards from being a pain like that's effective. And also Hook can't fade again next turn, which means Radigan's got the Buckingham Palace available in a great location. But it's, it's so a, good. It's an interesting blocked. choice. It's a very interesting choice. Ooh, that's discarding a lot there. OK, it is. And that's a lot of conditions Hook's been willing to let go of. Mm hmm. Well, the majority of them are easy so to avoid. Bad right away. Well, they are, but the flip side is that Hook really, really likes the ability, especially to play Cunning to get Brutes for free, mm -hmm. because those start stacking up in price the later you get into the game. True. Especially now that we're at the point where the two free power from the start of the game has been spent. Mm -hmm. Like Hook is actually going to probably find himself on the back leg for power for a little while. There you go. Ooh, wow, Wendy. Wendy's good, too. Wendy is fine. Wendy's um, not bad here at all. I like that. Um, Brad can be able to go and use Buckingham Palace for the full effective. Like, that play a card discards so much, it's very good. It's a very solid location all around. Give them a scare. Just trying to find out where Peter Pan is. More likely to figure out a way to get rid of taunts. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's fair too. Are yeah, giving up a boarding party. I think you just you need to cycle for the map right now. That's the point of these villains, where you're just searching for one card in particular. Like, you need to find the map right now. You cannot win without the map. One of the reasons I actually personally That's prefer. That's right. You kind of can't. Hook. It's hard to win without boarding parties too. That's true, but you can cycle They're back so for those. So flexible. To be fair. Yeah. Got, got Flavorshim's. Play, what is he using over there? Is he using a play card? I'm guessing maybe because he's got a lot of extra power. I don't know. He hadn't. He hadn't. Uh, I don't think he's actually called it yet. Um, I maybe didn't missed. do anything. Uh, maybe he gained the two power. Anything. I don't know what he did. I mean, it's possible he just played the ruffians for free and we missed it. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. I could believe it. Played he did play an extra card. Extra card. Okay. okay, never mind. So he did. Uh, look at us. We're so observant. Works you know. for me. <laughs> I know, right? Very so good great. commentators to completely so miss a very important great. detail. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> it's chill. It's, don't worry about it. It's fine. Um, he, so he's played three cards then and just discarding a lot right now. Not bad. I don't blame him. Again, Hook, once, he, once Hook is set up. There you go. Is very fast and i was just about to say it yeah so play Neverland's the map, map and instantly use it for the yeah so neverland uh, map unlocks the tree the and then too. what you can do with it as well is after it is uh what is it once it's out on the board you may discard it at any time in order to play instead of paying a cost for an item you may just play it for free so he discarded yeah, it getting a free cannon in the same turn is... yeah here's the question do you i feel like i think he should have used that cannon here potentially and he should have gotten rid of wendy i feel like i would have gotten rid of 100 110 percent. wendy should not still be on the board i don't yeah because wendy at this point like <laughs> you're also if anything you're also putting a situation where like you're now if any items get attached to wendy she's even more of a problem you have to, to deal with her even more the, she buffs up heroes even like all the stuff it's possible that hook is just waiting for a taunt to happen first just to get make sure 
that he can clear it out. But mm -hmm. I mean, the plus one on Peter is not the worst thing. That's fair. Either. He what, Rat can't typically fade a lot, so he so tolerating Wendy here could be a fair play. Lost poison pixie dust. Yeah, there, there you go. Yeah. As How long many... as Wendy doesn't get a taunt, like that's what he that's what you're hoping not to see. That's fair. Uh, that's fair. No, Rat. Uh, apparently, what is it? Because Radigan's inability to fate is yeah, Rat uh, can't afford to fate that often. Yeah, no, I, that, that makes sense. That makes sense why you would leave Wendy out. That's the that's one of the beauties of Villainous, the asymmetry where you have to go against specific matches, specific villains, and you have to figure out what works best in what situations. That's a really fair way in what in where in this specific matchup, it's a great idea to let Wendy set out. Maybe then, I don't know. I personally probably still would have gotten rid of her. Uh, Wendy's well, this are is an interesting targets. situation now because leaving Wendy on the board actually gives Rat an incentive to try to be more aggressive with his fates, yeah. which actually makes Rat play worse. So it, it, it's an interesting gambit to try to play into with Rat. Yeah, that's true. It's not like Wendy holding a taunt is really that bad either. I, it's it's fair. Yeah, it's better than a lost boy's getting a taunt. No doubt about that one. That's true. <laughs> but the biggest reason I don't, I'm not a fan of her is just the fact that she makes it so every single one of the uh, other heroes requires an next like an extra two or extra two strength. Other than uh, TikTok, all the rest of them require an extra two strength of allies to get rid of, which is rough. Speaking of rough. Uh, ruffians there you go ruffians <laughs> oh using that using the ruffians to get the discard action i ruffians like that for a discard is very 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 solid yeah i like that that's some good plays hook going back over to skull rock he's got he can fit he can fate pretty effectively while progressing towards the, his objective you got to be afraid of it honestly discarding again two other cards he only ha Ooh, he has seven left in the deck tinkerbell okay yeah, Tinkerbell going away is also kind of rough here. Uh, I don't know. Um, honestly, mm, I don't like any of this right now. Is it a good idea potentially uh, to makeshift balloon the the queen's guards over to the uh, over back to the palace, or maybe throw uh, Toby the here? Problem with that one, I w if I were to do that, I would want Toby honestly at the secret layer and move anyone else. You would put Toby at the Balloon secret on layer. Basil is fine. Probably so, yeah. Honestly. Hmm. Now you can't you may discard one item. You could discard the balloon immediately. You could, absolutely. <laughs> Which actually, I don't know if I uh what is it? How many cards are left? There are five cards left in, in Radigan's fate deck here. If you're trying to cycle. I don't know. Maybe I'm being crazy here. I don't again, I'm not minding that idea. Why why would you, in your yeah. opinion, what, what's the benefit of playing uh Ra uh, moving Basil over to Big Ben instead of to Buckingham Palace. Uh, largely because the biggest stopgap for Radigan tends to be power. Because remember, Robot Queen, 15 Oh, duh. Cost. Hook wants fates. Even, and with only three gears in play, covering that game too means that Radigan might actually not be able to get the Robot Queen out, you know, a turn later. Yeah. Uh, Plus, like you said, Hook is kind of baiting fate actions. Lost here. Boys should be over at the right location at this point, then, because you're gonna he, Hook is going over to the Hangman's Tree to move them most nine times out of ten here. So, you, he, so yeah, no, but it makes sense because because he, he's want because uh, Hook wants to bait fates. He wants to have Radigan cycle through his deck, his fate deck for him, and so that tracks. The question is, would I have done it with the? with toby <laughs> that's fair i kind of yeah. either of them would have done it i i would have maybe been all right with toby but i understand the logic behind balloon because mm -hmm. we now have an eight strength basil that's going to be tough to deal with should the objective end up flipping over mrs judson radigan loses judson, to power the classic <laughs> dude Ra judson hurts judson hurts she does people don't understand how annoying Jensen is. <laughs> mm -hmm. She's atrocious. Also, don't let me miss the you don't oh, never mind. She's forget fine. this ingenious device that got thrown down over here. We did see an ingenious device get played by uh, Captain Hook, which again, Captain Hook is one of the very few villains that just add a bunch of extra actions to his board. Uh, He's actually one of the only ones that really gets to do that. 
Yeah. You've got Pete who has a set of items that does it. But other than that, Hook is the best board expanding villain, which is not what I would have attributed him with. Mm-hmm. But it's a fun in ter- it's a fun system. I will say in terms of uh I think he adds yeah, I want to say he adds. Uh, he can add five actions if you want to go for the you can most add as actions. Many as five, yeah. Uh, we do. Madam Mim does take the cake there because I believe she adds seven. Yeah, but th- what she lacks is variety in her things. Hook has an entire toolkit. He could play an entire game oh, almost wow. with his items alone. So di- uh, uh, Mim just has the vanquishes. What is it? So we we did see uh, a sword. I believe that went onto the pirate brute. Uh, it did. That's a lot of that's a lot of numbers. That's ten at, strength at the left location jo- right there. At, uh, at Jolly Roger. And He's honestly, a, oh, there, yeah, there's oh, but we are seeing the robot queen. I would, but I feel safe to put that much allies down because we did see, uh, we did see who is it? I mean, uh, Tinkerbell's gone. Uh, Pixie dusts are gone. It's good to go ahead and start investing. Yeah, true. I'm loving the effective use of the capture by Radigan. I feel like a lot of Radigan players don't do that as often. Well, it's because capture is one of the cards that like, you draw it early before you get the robot queen and just kind of like it's discard fodder. Mm-hmm. But here that like competitive is the setting where you're going to actually see capture come in handy. Yeah, because you're going to have that constant barrage of heroes that you actually have a way to manage now. So there are five um, heroes left. He chose not to fate. Do you agree with that? Uh, at this point, with this setup, absolutely. Mm-hmm. You're looking at an ingenious device that's easy to get a double move hero on. You're looking at 10 strength at the Jolly Roger. Like, it's dangerous to start fading Hook at this point. Yeah. <laughs> Which is almost kind of what Hook wants anyway, because that makes Worthy Opponent a really nice pick. Uh, Mouse Queen? Not bad here. You have, uh, Radigan has the bell. But I don't, also yeah. don't think we've seen Felicia get discarded, so I think Radigan's fine. Yeah, Radigan doesn't mind this too badly. No. Devi- it's a second Devious into Mouse Queen. Devious yeah. into Mouse Queen, yeah. We could see... Okay, here we go. This is a good there's place. The, so we're the opponent. We're the opponent. How many... So, yeah, no. Oh, oh John's still here. Yeah. That's rough. Ick. How many other heroes are left in the Fate deck? I don't remember this right now. Um... I th- Was it just John and TikTok? I feel like it was just oh, wait, John I- and TikTok who were left. Yeah, TikTok, I think you're right. Yeah, TikTok hasn't been seen either. Because Tinkerbell got discarded. We've seen Wendy, Michael. Just haven't seen are... Peter yet. We've this seen is... the other Lost Boys. So I like this play because of the pure fact where if you can kill Mouse Queen quick enough, potentially. No, you yeah, put... I, I figured the, the thing that made that Mouse Queen not so bad is because he had to have her. So mm-hmm. he's very well set up for when the Mouse Queen does go down. Or alternatively, he's already got the ruffian start on Basil if Basil gets moved. True. And also, what is it? If because here's the thing, if you get a rough situation where like you don't have many hero movement tools left in the deck, and I think actually Moza may be gone at this point, which with only three fate cards left. Yeah, but those call for helps happen all the time. There's but there's only two. There's two call for helps. You have a Toby yeah, and a makeshift balloon. Can. Could have sworn so there were three. Here's the here's the thing. This is the last call for help until a reshuffle happens. If I'm not mistaken. So legitimately, there's a world where you yeah. use call for help and you get rid of the mouse queen now and or sorry, the robot queen. You get rid of the mouse. Yeah, you get rid of the robot queen and just pray. <laughs> like, I feel the, like the, the good thing about it is Ooh. Oh, he's sabotaging the Sabotaging the bell. That was a good move. I like actually. that. Yeah. That's a fair play. Because also, what is it? Rad- yeah. <coughs> I'm sorry. Radigan's got six strength plus two, so he's that eight total. Lucky. Yeah. So uh being able to no, if, sabotaging uh, the bell is a good call. So Felicia is most likely the best tool to get, to use to get rid of the mouse queen here, and if the bell is gone, you can't bring her back to get rid of uh, Basil when you need to. Nope. But I feel like Radigan forces Radigan to choose here. Which is Radigan's not something play here Radigan wants to have to do. If he he just needs to go to Fire from's toy shop play uh and what is it maybe just gain power and you need to play felicia next turn defeat mouse queen and you need to blitz your objective right now because you can do it i think I'm, unless i'm missing i feel like that like radigan can go quick right now but see here's the thing is most of radigan's speed has already happened that airship is a big part of rat's ability to turn a game around and he's already done it mm-hmm. yeah 
Gain three. Hook just had to reshuffle. So those worthy opponents are going to be showing up soon, and there's not much between Hook and Peter at this point. So for what it's worth, I potentially would have actually waited one turn before you played Felicia. Would have gone to Big Ben, played it, this, played it, and defeated yeah. same turn. Just to because make sure. now there's no way to get Felicia to the yeah. If like Felicia needs to move, you have to do. You could airship twice, but that's a lot of power you have to pay. But it's not bad here. So and we're uh, about to get the fate reshuffle on. There's no other deviouses. Two, it looks it... like. Nope. Oh wait, is not there? I don't one. know. What what are they doing? I don't know. They're checking something. I uh, have one and just thinking about it. I don't know. I'm not certain. But this could be really rough. Because if Rat doesn't have the Devious and the Robot Queen disc gets discarded now, then... Yep, there it is. Oh god, do you actually That's call for help now? There's an option. Is, there a, is this the world where you call well, for here's help? here's the problem. Tools don't really serve much purpose. Oh but god. I was gonna say, what's the call there? I don't know. To yeah, Toby was the best. What? Toby would have hurt like no one's business right now. Toby would have been the worst. Because you to play we Toby with Peter Pan. move Basil over and you have a full cover. I don't what I don't want to ignore the fact that we did skip tools Peter. there. I don't know. Oh no, that was a given. <laughs> I kind of The only a... upside there is Radigan guarantees getting TikTok on the next fate. But I think he's I think he is going over to Getting the taunt hurts for right here, yeah. Yep. No, it does That's for okay. sure. Yep. This is hook. Yeah. I don't want to call this hooks game to lose. I can't actually. Yet, really, you think? But it's hooks... kind of hooks game to lose. I feel like Radigan's <laughs> in a really good place. I. I mean, what if? Because no, we. You know, we haven't seen Mr. Starkey. That's a really fair point. Because he goes over to exactly. Mermaid Lagoon. You're right. Mermaid Lagoon, Ooh, Starkey, and Genius no, Device. I think this it's is it. I think you're right. I think you're right. I think Mr. Starkey here. I think Mr. Starkey is going to end up winning it. on another. Mermaid if it's on Mermaid Lagoon, another situation where Rat is a turn yep. from victory. Yep. I think it's there. You're right. I think he has it. Genius Wait, was Starkey not discarded earlier? Starkey. No, he. There you go. Oh, He's there back. It is. Yep. That's there it. it is. No. Wow, Rat really got busted on. No. Rat really got busted on that. Yikes. I, feel, I mean, I feel like if you. I per I'm gonna check this for myself. I actually really want to know what the top two fake cards were for uh, Radigan real quick. Yeah, Toby. Toby. Yep, there it is. Wow. TikTok. So this is I was Radigan. Uh, so I was, was gonna say two we knew we knew TikTok Wincom. was in the deck. TikTok, yeah. if you play it over to Mermaid Lagoon, you can't, Mister Starkey. Exactly. That's what I was. I was thinking that was that gonna be the play it, there. Yeah. But uh, Holy, what is it? I feel bad for Wonderful. Yeah, wonderful struggle right there. And I feel like I feel like you made a lot of good choices, but again, you didn't. You kind of had to go on that gamble right there of like, hey, you do. Is, you always do. Like, you don't know if Mister Starkey is actually discarded. You don't know what is currently like out right now. You don't know what's currently set and up. Given the reshuffle had just happened, it, it would have been hard to try to pin that down. Yeah, I feel. I mean, what is it? I I, I could have been overly paranoid with that potentially, but I would have I would have potentially still gone for the fade action because of that. But it's it's still. I, I mean, think... he made a good decision because. Yeah, no, I'm not. No, no, no. I don't want to say he made a bad oh, decision at timer. all. That was the it's... timer that went off. <laughs> yeah, I was trying to figure I... out what that did to do. <laughs> I, I feel like it's the it's just it's a situation where you don't know what is better here. Like it's just it's just yeah. like a it's a bit of a it's a bit of a yeah, mix I up there. It. But because uh... TikTok would have only put it off for. That's true, yeah. Uh, but we are going to be having another matchup happening. I'm not certain so how soon after, as we this game finished a lot sooner than we were expecting, honestly. Um, yeah, I know. Uh, what is it? Where we're going to be, I believe, having... Uh, let me pull it up. Where we're going to be having... Uh, Mooch and RJ uh, are going to be going uh, next. Um, uh, let's see. Do, um, how I'll, unfortunate. Do you want to go into their voice call real quick? Just talk with them for a second after this game? Uh, yeah, sure. Let's do that I would love quick. to hear some of yeah, yeah, yeah. On. Hey guys, hey, how are you guys doing today? It was good, it was good. Not great, yeah. Not great. I just lost on stream twice. Uh, hey, <laughs> no, it, it happens, it happens, don't sweat it. Uh, yeah, with my, with my favorite character. What like, I, a I game. Her. Those were good, yeah. you did effective. That was, that was a crazy two games right there. Yeah. Oh, oh, if, he, if he had Stark in his hand, I would have won. 
I think mm-hmm. right. No, mm-hmm. I, I feel so bad for an O2 Radigan, both at Wincon. It's yeah. so sad. <laughs> yeah, the, the, and the first the first game having the Mouse Queen and Basil out as the first. Two no, that was oh really yeah, hurt. no, you were, yeah. that was a that was I will say that was a rough start to say the least. Uh, but you that was there were some good plays there. I did enjoy that. Uh, I really it was what is it? Well, but... Yeah, have, having a mask up in the uh, facilities thing with seven cars is like it's like dance like luck. Yeah, a lot, so, of was, a lot of it was luck. That was... I, don't, I don't want to downplay Jim's skill as well. So that was a good time. Oh, no, time. no. Like, here's the thing. No, because what is it? Luck luck only carries you so far. You can get some bad fates, but if you don't have the n- ability to navigate carefully with those and be able yeah. to win with them effectively, like, it doesn't matter. So, like, yeah, it, I think it was honestly rough on your end, but at the same time, yeah, Jim, 100%, you did a great job there. Oh, man, appreciate it, man. I, I did what I could do, man. Yeah, yeah that, that was. I, I did with Anne hiding at the bottom of the deck, map that down to the bottom of the deck. Yeah, I, <laughs> I wasn't. I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure the fate or not. I was like, wait, Peter Pan could be at the bottom, so I don't want to help. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. That's the, I, that's the risk you got to play with Radigan. And I'll say yeah. as well, I, 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 I enjoy- since mm, go ahead. season one, it's always just been fate the rat and see where it goes. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's yeah. That's the first time I've lost in this league, so you got me. Hey. Wow. You know what? Hey, listen, yeah. that's that's not bad. So how many um, was it? How many matches you guys have for this you week? You went down swinging. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. definitely, <laughs> definitely. Yeah. Yeah, how many I'm, matches do you guys I'm have pretty... left this week? I just have one more. That's it. Okay, uh, that, was, that was my last one. That's good. Nice. All right, so so uh, I, I put in the in, I put in the form for you guys. Don't worry. Uh, but so with that in mind, then you guys are uh, what was it? I don't the wicked points take a second to update here, but I want to say at least uh, I think if if it's if it's correct, I think uh, Jim, you're. You're currently tied for second place, I think. Tied for second, oh shit, that's, that's cool. Shit. Yeah, it's it's you're you're <laughs> right up there right now, which is it's pretty cool to see. Um, yeah. What is it? Yeah. Very good. I, what a, what a way to start a season. Yeah, and I I'll definitely still be. I think I should still be in uh the blue pool if I get a good. Oh, yeah, you good. This is the yeah. first loss. You good. Yeah. Um, yeah. But no, that was that was that was fun. I had a good time. Um. Those are some hard villains to play against with Radigan. It was, it was a, I didn't know if I, if I could have some commentary on my flop choice. I really gave it some good thought. Um, so I tried to ban Cruella uh, there just because I, I would be left with her for sure. Um, now this know, is, any thoughts on that, you guys? Do you, th- so, so in the matchup, because I'm trying to think of like what matchups you're going to be going for here. B- between, because one of the things I think about typically whenever I go for the flop, whenever I'm getting rid of a card you're you you want to choose okay i think they're gonna pick x i'll have to pick y they'll pick x i'll pick y like you get to kind of decide your whole matchup so do you and for yourself do you feel more comfortable with uh mother gothel here than you do corella i felt more comfortable with uh with corella but probably slightly like i I think i I probably have played better with corella actually um but um i just i just know with mother gothel i can still play play pretty well and so i thought Maybe it'd be okay, but that's fair. Yeah. yeah. Jim, yeah, do you have fun, do you have a, a a character that you per like? Is, is there do you enjoy playing as facility? Do you enjoy the hook here? Is is do is there a villain that you're more scared of against these guys? Because again, you navigated that pretty well. Uh, what is it with the cards on your side as well? Do you is there something you prefer there in that situation? Um, I was trying to think. Yeah, because you. I thought I could at least pull out one win with Radigan, but they're both really good villains too. Um, My apologies, uh, yeah, Jim. What were you thinking about that? I'm so sorry, Jim Danny. Yeah, I, was, I was debating on picking I two E hook, but I'm like, I mean, against Gotho, I think O G hook is better because I, I just assumed I was gonna have to, I was gonna lose against Radigan and then have to play against Gotho. So I'm like, okay, I think O G hook is probably better against Gotho than I two E hook, but I'm not yeah. sure. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, it, it's tough because O G hook has that freedom to. I mean, ITE has a freedom to fate, and then, you know, you can try to get him. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was thinking. And... I was thinking, too, like, I don't want to fate like that against Radigan, like, anyway. So I'm like, I, ITE mm-hmm. would kind of be, like, pointless for me to get at that time. Yeah. It makes sense. Um, yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think about other commentary, but... But, uh, uh, actually, I, I, I was going to ask this, because I noticed this bit from, uh, I think it was from you, Wonder. Uh, w- did you... So when you so when you were fading uh, facility, I think it was the last fade. I had to step away for a second, so I apologize. I missed part of it, but I think uh, Ditto can correct yeah. me on what occurred. You when you I think you pulled in almost there with I want to say it was Ray, right? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I, yeah. I got Ray and yeah. and almost there. Yep. Yeah. So 
Do, so Ed, I'm w- w- the play you made was with almost there. You put it in a mass spirits. If I'm not mistaken, you also put in, I want to say friends, Death the other Bracelet. side and uh, shadow spirits. Uh, was, yeah, but, I think it was, I think it was I think it was a desperation or a shadow spirit. Something like yeah. That. yeah. So yeah, in all, your all in your situation, in. Yeah. why do you? Because uh, in my personal opinion, I think it's potentially better to take or leave less cards in there if you've got a guaranteed mass spirits. Do you dis, is that something you like immediately were thinking of? Is that like it's something you disagree with? There, you just like more cards in there, just worse odds. It, I was at WingCon, so I want to throw in as many cards in there as possible. Um, to kind of prevent <laughs> the what's it called um the real new orleans i was yeah. thinking about I, felt, I think i looked at his discard i think he had three mass spirits in the discard um mm-hmm. if that's what you were talking about like just, li- just only putting in two and then maybe getting an almost there you're saying uh was it or, yeah so he had uh so it if, if i'm not mistaken what was in the discard or what was in his uh deck if i think it was uh, i don't know there was a card a friends on the other side and real new orleans so three cards in there yeah, it was, three, uh, it was three and a fourth in at the time. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and then in his hand, I got to put one in. Oh, are you talking about when I got, I got to look at his hand and put one in there? That last fate, yeah, with uh, Ray and almost there. No, the, it oh, was okay, before yeah. that. It was before that part, but yeah. No, it's, it's, it's fair. Oh, I think you guys both oh, played oh, those need, really effectively. Like... <laughs> yeah, thanks. The crazy no. part is I was debating before that to play Talisman when I when I went to the Bayou in game three, but I was like, if you don't come up, I'm just screwed. So I'm just, yeah. like, just going to hold it and just... Hope that I'll, I'll get it. Yeah, I knew, I knew all the four strengths. I'm sorry, go ahead, man. No, I was going to say, your door had came with that next fate, too, so I'm like... Yeah. No, that's, yeah, some, that's some those, um, good awareness. All the, lower, the, lower strength, the lower strength heroes were at the bottom, uh, it mm-hmm. seems like. So I was I was like, okay, at least I'll be able to steal the talisman a little bit. It's really nice to have Lawrence go wherever you need, but I had to cover yeah, that top eight. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <Lawrence laughs> no. yeah. Well, guys, I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna let you finish up in here, but I'm excited to see what you guys got going on. Talking to number two, and uh, what was it? I'm excited to see what else you got going on. Wonderful, because you've got a very, you've done very well thus far in the league. So, uh, what was it? I'm excited to see what's gonna. I'm excited to see what else you guys are gonna do, though. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I'm. I'm excited to to get to know you better too, and maybe be on stream again if that's possible. Yeah. It will. Well, hey, you know what? Anything's yeah. possible. I'm excited. I'm just excited for the future. It's good stuff, guys. Appreciate you guys uh, doing this. Uh, you guys are welcome to chat. We're gonna bounce out. Did unless you had any sure. other thoughts on this? No, nah, just very excellent uh, showing for the start of the season, guys. That's really good. Yeah, thank you. Some Thanks great you stuff. Too. All right, yeah. uh, appreciate it. You guys have a great time. See ya. Yeah. Uh, that was a f- honestly really impressive to see. Those were some good games. Those were those were some good games there. I liked it. That was insane. <laughs> yeah, no, I think I think I think wonderful. I personally, I think wonderful is being a little hard on himself. Uh, what is it? Well, uh, I can kind of and I don't want this to sound bad, but I can kind of see where he's coming from, because mm-hmm. Radigan is such an easy villain to win with. And he just yeah, got shut down. I ooh. the tail end. <laughs> OK, so I, I, I think I, I'm going to be honest here, Ditto. Uh, what was it also standing in a second as you see that. Um, I, I think you're speaking from a bit of like first season bias. I think Radigan's 100 oh, percent. Yeah, I don't think Radigan's uh, as di- as easy to win with as you may think. I think well, Radigan is right? stronger, because but over time, most of what we've gotten since season one even has been a lot of characters that are all pretty fast in their own right. Mm-hmm. But Radigan has always been consistent. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, That's because fair. a lot of these faster characters that have come up have all kind of been a little swingy. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mem can be a little swingy sometimes. Facilier is a little swingy. Hook even can be swingy depending on, you know, fit, uh, deck order. Yeah. But Radigan has always been like a very consistent, very solid, good character. Yeah, it's kind of hard to throw Radigan off course. So that's why that's why I say Radigan's an easy one to win with. Sure. No, I get that. He, he's he been power crept a little bit, but not much. <laughs> no, that makes sense. That's a, that's a fair point. Um, what is it? Well, uh, we'll talk about the standings here for a second, because we were uh, there's going to be a little bit of a break in between. Uh, was it like I said, the mat- first mat- match went uh, a little bit quicker. So we've got some time before I believe it's RJ is going to be ready to jump into uh, the game here. So we're going to take a second. Uh, we're going to talk about the actual standings currently inside the league uh, just for current villains as well as we'll talk about some villain stats because i think it's interesting 
uh, as a lot of it actually goes into the ban rates, which actually just recently got added, and I think it's going to be interesting to discuss here. Uh, but we do currently have um, Zachary at number one. Uh, Zachary currently uh, has... Uh, five match wins. He's only lost one. He's got 30 points, which is the most out of anyone. The biggest thing I will say, though, against like anything about too much excitement there is I'm actually personally uh, uh, did. I don't know if you have the stats up. I've got it right here as well. But personally, if you guys look all the way down here, it's actually num it's it shows pretty far down where right now. He's currently won six games, only lost one. And that's at three. That's overall three wins, which means he's doing absolutely great. He's currently out of town right now this week. So he's only played three matches. He's still in the top, I'd say, half of the current uh, standings right now. He's not doing bad at all. We're going to have to wait to see until he can play. I don't believe he can play until, I want to say, Sunday night or Monday night. Uh, so we've got a couple of those people who are going to be saving their games uh, inside of the blue pool. They're going to be saving it for him, uh, saving their games for him. But it's going to be pretty interesting. Overall, though, uh, I think him and Mooch, we do have playing here in a second. Uh, him and Mooch are the only people we have with a 100% match win rate thus far. So I'm interested to see if that's going to stay consistent uh, in this next game. I feel like that's going to be a little bit of a little bit of an interesting it's, one. It, it, Mr. It Anvil 2. Is Mr. Anvil 2? Did I miss that? Oh, you're right. Mr. Anvil 2. Oh, wow. And Mr. Anvil's done even more matches. Mr. Anvil's gone, done five match wins. Wow. Okay. Interesting. That's really good then. Wow. Yeah, so we've got a lot of people over this 27 right now, and there's a large group in there. Uh, what was it? Yeah, so in second place as well, we also have H HTS, uh, who's sitting there. Jim Dandy's now there as well. The point uh, order and everything hasn't been done, uh, but HTS is sitting right there as well, and I think it's going to be occurring. Uh, what is it? We'll, we'll, it'll get updated at some point in the future, but I mean, this is it's it feels like it's going to be pretty pretty close so far. We got this large group of 27s, and I don't... I'm interested in how many of them are actually going to be how many how many of these guys as well because i am in that group of 27s i'm assuming how many of them is actually gonna be in the blue pool next week but it's a pretty competitive season so far and even though we've only got a day or two left right now there's a lot left to happen um there is ditto how much you feel how much do you feel like is there anything is, are, i know there's a lot of like a lot of stats we can immediately see here are there anything is there anything specific here that you think is interesting in this matchup i feel like there's a lot of really good people who have great game win percentages uh in comparison to match win percentages uh balancing that out like actually mr anvil if we go back to seven that's about 77 percent uh, of his games he's winning but he's using the 77 percent in order to get a hundred percent match win rate which is keeping him up there so yeah well it's worth keeping in mind for all of these particular stats that we're very early in the season here right yeah so a lot of these numbers a lot of these this big group of 27s here uh comes down to just a smaller sample pool mm -hmm. i think over time what you're going to see is a lot of these big groups of similar numbers start distilling each other out and you're going to see the care the players like zachary like mooch like uh, mr anvil start to kind of float into a better lead and i think you'll start to see everything else start to trickle back down into place yeah that's fair i like I, I, it's one of the parts that i really do enjoy about the pool system here because even though was it we got x we got all these people who are currently in the top right now it's one of the disadvantages i think of playing in the first in that first week where everyone has to try to figure out you know where they're standing yet the new players got the old players not really great to play anyone against anyone else but you're gonna there's a good chance that if you're potentially better at the game if you're someone who's gonna stay in blue pool consistently honestly like zachary you're gonna be able to get a good amount of wins early on. So these are still like, uh, like did I said very, very fairly, a lot of early stats. We're gonna to have to see how it goes for the rest of it. Yeah, and it's also early enough in the season that there's not really a well-defined season meta just yet. Mm -hmm. A lot of the meta we have to rely on carried over from last season, and we didn't have the intro villains last season. True. Those intro villains are a huge uh Yeah, let's talk about I those villain stats here. Inflection point for how meta's going to go. We'll talk about the those stats here cuz I think it's a really interesting point. We're going to zoom. Um it's going to be a bit too small to read on stream. Now we'll just go back to we'll do 90. It's a little easier. Okay. Mm. Yeah, it also didn't have bigger and better as well. It's a fair point. Um so how bad is Gotha doing? So if we actually look at the overall win rates for each villain. Let's go to the very end here. Uh we'll just talk about this part. Uh Captain Hook is has been played 16 times and is even 
on wins and losses. Who's got who's who's doing best right now in terms of win rate? Base Maleficent is currently winning twice as many games as she's losing. That's interesting Base to see. Maleficent all right. was always good. <laughs> yeah. Oh wow, Lotso. I didn't expect to see Lotso so high. Lotso has won ten games and, and only lost two of them. That's interesting. I didn't expect that one actually though. Uh, what is it? We do have Madame Mim as well. Uh, win, win, win rate percentages are in the bottom as well. Oh, that's a very true point. Let's go look at those. Uh, what is it? So, yeah, we're looking at lots of... That's an 83% win rate right there. Madame Mim's at 77. Again, this is very... I will say a lot of this stuff, it's, again, very early stats, but it's still interesting to discuss them. Uh, Ma lots is currently at 83, which I think is probably the highest out of all of them. Madame Mim's at 77. And I think next up... Uh, Prince John, base Prince John, is also up there right now, too. Well, that... what interests me most about stats like that, right, mm -hmm. is those percentages only tell half the story. Because look at his win percentage based on the number of games he's been played in versus somebody like Gothel. Oh, Mother Gothel Mother Gothel's Gothel's been played in way yeah. more games. Mm -hmm. And so the win rate's a lot lower. When you get That's somebody fair, yeah. like Lotso, Lotso doesn't come up in as many games probably because people aren't that comfortable with him yet. Mm -hmm. Or he gets banned. One of the two. Yeah, and no. so the games he is allowed to play, he tends to perform really well at. Mm -hmm. You yeah, know the ability kind of the to same be able deal to, with Madame Mim. yeah, the ability to be able to fade as much uh, to have enough control over that fade is really great because Lotso has some really great fates that he can do, but he's also very susceptible to a he lot of his fade a lot cards. Of real, really easy to set back. Yeah, yeah, so it's a very good combo there. I like that though. Yeah, no, it's a fair, it's a very fair point. Yeah, because we're all we have seen. Yeah, so it's, and I also feel like we also let's look at the ban rates because it actually goes into a completely different sec, uh, section here. Whereas, so if we're gonna talk about the villains that were actually banned here. The only ones that will say you're not gonna see uh, any information on banning is we, you will not see any anything here at the end for the intro villains as we are using the same selector card and when you choose either Captain Hook or what any, when one of those four is selected for, that are inside of Intro to Evil and Worst Takes It All you get to choose after the flop so it is for these guys it's very specifically both both versions of Captain Hook both versions of Melissa both versions of Prince John both versions of Ursula that when they're getting banned but uh, and actually we can see this here so, oh, this is, oh, I think this is how many times they, they're actually, like, selecting people are choosing to play as them. Okay. Yeah. So, we're seeing Captain Hook getting uh, selected a total of 22 times, but uh, it's 10 for Intro to Evil, 12 for Base. Which doesn't surprise me at all. The differences between Intro versus Base Hook are negligible. <laughs> yeah. How many, ban who's getting banned the most right now? I want to say this. So, we have seven I bands. Mean, it's going to be Mem. There's no is question it? about that. Um, yeah, you're right. It is Mim. Mim's at 11, but I, I didn't expect Gaston to be the next one, honestly. I don't know why Gaston's been banned that much. Mm -hmm. He's not that scary. <laughs> Interesting. After playing with Intro to Evil a little bit more, you don't think players should get a choice on which one they play. It gives those four so much versatility based on the rest of the flop. That's that's interesting point. What do you think about that, Ditto? Uh, so, I would tend to agree. However, and, you know, at the end of the season, stats are eventually going to, like, prove this or not. But obviously, Ursula is far and away the most different. Yes. But the other three, I mean, stuff has changed, but not a lot has changed, really. Mm -hmm. So, I, like, the... Some of the matchup specific stuff changes depending on how e how much easier or harder it is for the intro versions to get to those fade actions. But as a on a whole, I wouldn't be any more scared of the intro versions than the base for these guys. Interesting. I personally Not playing against them. What do you who do you think is who do you think is the strongest? Who do you think is the strongest in the intro box? I don't know if I've even asked you that. Like outside in the of this intro box, yeah. Like because I'll say we we chat a good chunk, but I don't know if I've actually asked you that. Who do you think is strongest <laughs> in the intro box here? 
Um, overall, I kind of want to say Prince John. That's fair. Uh, Pr- Prince John. I don't want to say Prince John had the best glow up because Ursula, like you, you can't care. like yeah. But Prince that's John actually interesting. Went from being pretty good to being really good. Yeah, I trust. We've actually seen. Um, what is it? No, so we've seen uh, only the intro of Maleficent, only chosen twice. Yeah, it's it's largely I'm guessing because the intro version of Maleficent has a slightly harder, like it, it's harder to race with her because you have to get your yeah board set up a little more uh, than you do as base Maleficent. So I'll I say because yeah, people Slade just kind of looked at it and not wanted to put in the extra effort. Even though putting in that extra effort, I think, is probably fine. Yeah. Uh, so as Lay said in chat, and I think it's a fair point, taking uh, Maleficent as an example, the uh, worst takes at all Maleficent is great to race, but in Intro to Evil, uh, that version of her is great against a heavier fader because she can get a pretty easy combo given time. And that's a really fair point. Yeah. I feel like, yeah, Maleficent's got a lot of strengths in this new version here. Uh, but this is one of those things that I personally enjoy as a... Uh, as someone, I think I've, I've played with a lot of the intro characters as well as also some of the bigger batter characters, a decent chunk. And I feel like at times it's more than a lot of the other people that I'm playing with in the league. And with those villains, I'm, I feel better putting either bigger and batter or intro characters into the mix because I really enjoy changing the, changing it up a little bit because I don't think people are play, have played against those guys as much as the others. Gosh, my contract. I don't know. Is that a fair point? Well, so when you look at the intro to evil versions of these characters, I think the easy thing to fall into or the easy mindset is that most of the changes were to the villain decks. I swear. I'm so, sorry. I'm fine. My contact true. just feels like it's messing up. I'm not crying. I swear. What you don't real, or I guess what people don't think about. It's also just a light. Because of that. The fact that the fate decks for those characters didn't change a ton mm-hmm. between worst takes at all and intro to evil means that playing against them doesn't usually feel a whole lot different. Yeah. Um, well, priorities change a little bit. Yeah. As okay. far as which specific cards are better or worse at different times, but the overall strategy I feel like doesn't seem to change much. Mm. At least it doesn't feel like it's changed much. I, well, I would so I would argue that's definitely a lot more different for Hook and for Ursula here. Hook, actually, no. Hook I, honestly, the most I think it's only the same deck. for Maleficent. I think everything other than every yeah, single, Maleficent's uh, the rest state of deck is entirely the same. Like, uh, it's just how it how it interacts with her gameplay directly. Yeah, that has changed. But even then, like you're basically doing the same stuff with her fate deck. Mm-hmm. So I mean. It's playing against her is not going to feel a whole lot different between the two versions. Playing yeah. against Prince John might feel a little different because you want to prioritize different cards depending on which version it is. Mm-hmm. And I think that's or one of the things against where... Hook, where, uh, you know, playing Peter early isn't necessarily the worst thing ever. You know? I, and I think that's a similar situation for currently the new Prince John, where you're right. potentially playing, uh, you're potentially fading him more similar to the way you played against old uh, worst takes at all hook. Because right. of no, 100% Prince John because forcing himself out. Traded gimmicks almost. <laughs> yeah. In a weird way, because now Prince John is the one that's kind of baiting Robin Hood out of his fate deck. And so, yeah, a lot of that strategy applies to Prince John now. Mm hmm. Yeah. And then Captain um, Hook, I mean, you almost want to make sure you can fate him in order to make sure he has to use the map because the map hurts. Like, it's weird, but you yep. I, I feel like that's a situation where, like, you really would like to you want to get you want to be able to make a point to discard Peter Pan. So Hook doesn't get to play him himself and avoid the struggles of the Neverland map, because the Neverland map is a lot different in the new version of Hook. It is, and it's a lot more annoying in the new version. <laughs> I, I mean, the new version of Hook. I've said it before. I'll say it again. I'm I'm new. Hook is my is in my opinion. I, I get I, everyone loves Ursula. I get it. But in all honesty, 
I was more excited about the hook change than I was about Ursula. Because Yeah, I could see that. Because I'm I've said I've said it before, I'm not a fan of villains where you just have to find exactly one card and that's it. And you just have to keep searching for one card. Like your one key card, yeah. Exactly. This is potentially an interesting take for me because I don't know that I've ever said it like publicly before. Mm-hmm. But I tend to not be a huge fan of characters with locked locations. Interesting. And so the biggest change to me that was a positive for Hook was just losing that lock. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think people discount how good that is for Hook because that's an extra fate and a move hero he has access to for the whole game. Very this... much changes how Hook is allowed to approach his... He can play a little, like we were talking earlier, he could play a little more aggressive that way. Yeah, and I think Hook's been, at least the base version, has also been like one of the stronger versions. This is what I want to ask you, actually, because I want to talk about that. It goes back to what we saw earlier with uh, against Facilier as well. And... I kind of, I'm wondering what you think about the fact or the idea where potentially like all of these villains, uh, I want to say, I'm going to throw like, let's, I'm going to say, uh, Facilier and Hades, both of those villains were balanced. I want to say Facilier was balanced around, uh, the majority of the time having, uh, Tiana always on the board and, uh, Hades was always balanced, balanced around having panic always on the board. One uh, but while he says that, Chaos, thank you so much for the rate. I appreciate you, my buddy. Like Let me give you a quick little shout out. <laughs> uh, Facilier's deck, I, we talked about it a little bit earlier. Facilier's deck is so cheap. The fact that he gets so he has so many. Thank you so much, Chaos. How are we having a blast? Free. We're currently in between. Beyond um, the conditions. What is it? We're currently that, in between like, matches right now, and we're discussing what was going yeah, on it right there. Makes you like wonder what because or what, what was going on, and currently discussing. Top <laughs> there really villain. isn't uh, the current um, matchups right now. Yeah, no, it's rough. But again, it, it's it, it's a deal where you're exactly right. Like Facilier, I don't want to say Facilier can't afford to vanquish that often, but because of where his vanquish action is at, and because Louis is such a good card to put there, um. He has to be a little judicious about when and how he chooses to go for vanquishes. And so there might be a time where he has to just sit there and kind of accept that Tiana's there. Um, mm -hmm. That would be my guess is like for a lot of the playtesting, that's exactly what happened is Tiana just kind of had to sit there. Yeah. And he just had to live with it. And they balanced him around the fact that he just had to live with it. Yeah, I'm kind of wondering, like, it's it feels like it's a bit of a sarcastic question because I've heard... It's I've, I've I've heard people talk, the joke before that, you know, whoever played again as Hades in the playtesting was mus most likely a god at the game was actually a, a Hades, the god. Um, <laughs> he kind of had to be probably because of that. Um, but it's it's literally just because of this last match, it's made me all of a sudden question it. Like, did, w was everything balanced around those cards? It there's a realistic chance that they were. Because, um, yeah. It, it's it's definitely pop because here's the thing uh and i i think i'm pretty comfortable saying this um play testing in a game like this mm -hmm. certain strategies kind of begin to develop even in the early place play testing stages and so you get certain ideas of how uh you get ideas for how certain things go right um, yeah it's just like playing any other game like it's not like we sit down and stress test every possible deck order against every other possible deck order to see what happens you yeah. just play the game and so certain stuff like if certain strategies start happening balancing happens around those strategies mm -hmm. so it's perfectly possible with Facilier and Hades, that their cost adjustment cards were just always on the board. And so they felt like it was... Because that's the other thing, is Facilier has one of the cheapest decks in the game, and Hades has one of the most expensive. So yeah. it's an easy assertion to make. And I think it's probably true that their cost adjustment cards just never really went away. 
And so they were they, they were built assuming that those cars would exist. No, that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, what is it? Uh, but it's no, there's a lot of interesting stuff with all that, but I'm excited to uh, excited to see how it's going to go. But those are, that's an interesting idea. Also, uh, uh, Zlay mentioning in the chat uh, uh, before, I do believe actually we do now have RJ inside of the room. So I'm going to, uh, what is it? We'll be swapping back over to here in a second. Um, but uh, we're swapping back over to Villainous. But I do want to say, yeah, that's it. Uh, I think they played Tested Doctor with just flooding the Force Pile and wanting luck to be a more important factor. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. But that's an interesting idea, too. I like that. That's a lot of cool stuff. But uh, we are jumping into our next match here. Um, and uh, what is it? OK, cool. So we're going to be doing this now. Um, Jim Danny did win that game in total. Uh, I forgot to update his stars. Sorry. Uh, but I do. So it's now going to be Mooch and RJ. Uh, they're going to be figuring out exactly who they want to play. Each of them, um, I'm not, I'll fill, fix the names and all the villain stuff once I know who's going on each side. Otherwise, I'll tell them it's good to start. They've already rolled, which I think means Mooch got the choice to choose uh, the order. Uh, let's, let me make sure I got this form. And I'll let them know who is first pick. I don't, I didn't spell first right, and I don't care. <laughs> who needs to spell? Who's first pick here? Who is first set pick? <laughs> Mooch is first pick then. Okay. So Mooch's first pick, which means that RJ is going to be second pick here. <laughs> this isn't Speaking honestly. Speaking of the devils. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this isn't bad. How did I you feel get like... all of Wicked to the core in one flop? What? I mean, I think you just ban. Honestly, I think in this situation, I would ban Hades and call it a day. Like, this is fine. Like I don't mind any of the rest of the matchups. Is Hades the one you ban? I think so. Like he's he has I think he's one he's the weakest out of everyone else there. I guess so. Yeah. Yeah, I like that's not bad. All right, uh, now they're gonna decide who they're gonna. Who are they? Who are they putting where? Let's see this. Who's choosing next? What do you go for? Uh, is it? Do you just go for Doctor here? Because I feel like there's also a kind of a world where I kind of like Evil Queen here. There's also so both not, of those know. are like classically great picks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but the interesting thing is that we actually have two characters here that very much favor luck, just luck. True. And I would almost be willing to pick Queen as my first. You're ab no, I. I have played Oogie with you. No, your luck is horrible. My you, luck is not great. There were games. <laughs> <laughs> there were games where like we like we, we felt like it didn't matter with the game we played because your your luck was so atrocious it didn't matter. This is true, but I love Queen of Hearts. <laughs> it's a really fun character. Uh was it who won the die and roll? Queen of uh, Hearts can Mooch won the die roll, which meant that sorry, uh he chose uh first pick. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. No, Queen of Hearts can luck her way into such a good win so well. Yeah. Which film? Are they, they're figuring out. Was the was the cheat uh, card created exclusively for Ditto? New Lord Drop. That's wow. There you go. So fun fact, it was not. But those cheats never actually helped me once. Oh no, that's not even <laughs> no no. That's not true. That's not true. I'm this pretty is, sure most no, of the I've times that I actually got to no, play I'm not, cheat, no, I'm not I accepting this. As, I'm not accepting this as a reality. You're not going to be putting this on the. No, you cannot say that on the internet. No, you, those actively <laughs> helped you so many times. You're just you're rejecting that reality and substituting your own. Uh, what is it? But I want to say, uh, so I wanted to say, uh, thank Chaos for that raid over here. But Chaos is actually going to be jumping in here. We're going to have Chaos jump in for a last second, also addition into commentary. Oh, um, I'm going to expand the server for him. Um, what is it? Uh, oh, so we had, was that a Mal choice first? It was. Mal got picked first, which I understand. <laughs> okay. I get yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, Mal and then Dr. Cillier, who I mean, I, I think I go Evil Queen next. No. Queen no? Queen of Hearts? Yeah. Oh my. I get this. I get this. This is some wild plays. Did you ever cheat against Joker Jonesy? Oh, I only cheat against Joker Jonesy. Only. 
<laughs> He's the only one I would ever cheat against, of course. Uh, what is it? Chaos, hope you're doing well here today. Uh, I, I, the password should be available, but you're welcome to jump in here. Uh, it's The games have not hey, started yet. They've just set up the villains. Hope you're doing well. Where Where is this password? It's in competitive Disney. Do you need me to... Uh, the password is just league, lowercase. And Queen of Hearts is, uh, was chosen first. So I think I, I, I've talked with you a little bit about this uh, draft matchup as well, Chaos, right? Uh, probably. What exactly? The matchup where uh, was with drafting, it's going to be the five villains. You get to ban one first pick, second pick. Oh, uh, yeah, I already know how draft works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think I've talked about this with you. Uh, I yeah. want your opinion on this because I feel like I, I, I felt like this was an Im immediately an interesting play from Mooch. The, the four revealed villains were Evil Queen, Facilier, Mal, and Queen of Hearts. And... What was the fifth revealed one? Uh, Hades, who was banned. Him, right? Hades was banned. Mm. And then um, Queen, of, Queen of Hearts... Uh, was it Mal? Maleficent was chosen first. And then uh, Queen of Hearts. And I didn't expect that. Interesting. Yeah, what do you think of that? Uh, I know nothing about Queen of Hearts. I'm a little surprised that Facilier wasn't chosen first. I can understand picking Mal first, because I think Maleficent has, um... I'm pretty sure she's good. She can be pretty good against Evil Queen, because of Evil Queen's difficulty fading. And then, I don't know for sure, but I feel like Maleficent might be one of the, like, good attempts at beating Facilier, who's historically considered one of the best. Mm-hmm. So I can get picking Mal specifically with the idea of being able to beat Facilier and or Evil Queen with her. That's fair, yeah. I know nothing about Queen of Hearts, though. So that throws an entire wrench into my level of knowledge entirely. That, that's, you know, that's totally fair then, yeah. Um, here, let me make sure everyone's promoted correctly. Uh, and I'll set this up correctly. But then, yeah, so I feel like this is going to be a very interesting matchup just based off of that. I'm excited to see how this is going to go. Um, but... I, I don't mind any of this. So uh, I'll say Queen of Hearts objective in case you guys aren't familiar with it. Uh, Queen of Hearts objective is to have a wick at every, every single location. Queen of Hearts has a, uh, a bunch of allies uh, who are card guards. What she can do is she can activate those card guards to turn them into a wicket. Then she uh, will play that wicket and do something similar to a uh, to Dr. Facilier's uh, cards will tell. And then she'll be able to use that in order to uh, she needs to have, I think, more like how does it work? There? Is it like less cost than uh, strength? I think revealed. Is that how that works? Yeah, the cost of all the revealed cards has to be less than the strength. She reveals. Yeah. Or the strength in wickets that she has. There you go. Which I, I'm very happy that we have the two luck characters up against each other here. Yeah, no, you mentioned that as well. Like, it, both of these villains are very luck-based. And, and we've, honestly, I think, to go back on the, the whole conversation before, I think that's what inspired the Queen of Hearts pick. Because Facilier being a luck-dependent character for his win con, and especially being as fast as he is, means that you kind of have to have a little bit of that high roll potential in your back pocket. Mm -hmm. uh, just to be safe. And so I completely understand the Queen of Hearts pick there. That makes sense. If there was anybody that could sneak... Because Queen of Hearts, the most important thing is to play close to your chest as best you can and undersell where you like where you actually stand. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's unfortunate... Because Queen of Hearts, the big thing she we did just see, uh, by the way, it makes you talk, smaller from Queen of Hearts, <laughs> which you're not going to get here. Yeah. Um. But it's nice to see because Queen of Hearts, I think a lot of people kind of sleep on. True. Mad Hatter already out, who's now a little bit smaller. We can immediately make him larger, though. I have I don't see makes you larger used as often, though, in games. It's cool to see that that used. It's because it's expensive, and Queen of Hearts would much rather save her money on off with your head because in it, like most, yeah, there you just go. like that. Uh, most situations where you could feel relatively comfortable shrinking a hero, you probably just want to save for the one extra power to kill him. That's fair. Light. Uh Doctor going back over to Keanu's place to perform. Oh, got the cane already. Gosh. 
Queen. That's going to be fun. Early, to early Kane. Early Kane. Early Canyon is rough. Cass, I mentioned this earlier to Ditto. Um, I want your opinion on this. I was thinking about this with with uh, both Hades and Dr. Facilier. I feel like Dr. Facilier was balanced around Tiana being stuck on the board, and Hades is balanced around Pain always being on the board. I feel like it's one of the only ways that potentially makes sense, actually, how strong they are. Oh, Ray and Eudora are rough here. Double blocking that voodoo is smart, too. Sorry, what, what do you think about that chaos? Sorry, I was just... Uh, I mean, I guess that would make sense. Yeah, I mean... I definitely feel like they weren't balance tested, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. It doesn't, really, it doesn't really feel like they are a lot of the time. That's... Yeah, no, uh, th there's definitely some parts of them that are really... Some villains... I, I feel like it's balanced like Smash Bros. is balanced. Smash Bros. isn't balanced. And okay, so uh, Queen of Hearts is going over to White Rabbit's house because <laughs> I'm not going to argue with you there. These two are <laughs> Oh my goodness, it's a snack. Oh, Big oh, Daddy. Juju is good. The, missing Big Daddy is rough, but Juju potentially gets rid of the cane. Yeah, this is going to be a heavy fate war, it looks like. I mean, right this now. isn't the time for Big Daddy to happen anyway. He absolutely just hit the cane and make Facilia cry. Yeah. Early cane? <laughs> nope. Uh, Facilier, yeah, this is, looks like we're just getting a full-on Fate War right now, uh, as Facilier is going right back over to the Voodoo Emporium. This is relentless. I love John Goodman. My goodness, Facilier has so much power. Yeah, Facilier has got a lot of power, wow. That's, that's one of the benefits of those, uh, intro to evil rules. Everyone's starting off with two extra power right here. Really benefits him. Discarding Mass Spirits. I love it whenever I find John Goodman. Sorry, I'm related. I just love it when I find John Goodman, like something else I'm watching. Um, it's like some sitcom or whatever, and it's actually John Goodman. I'm like, that's what's Sully doing here? I love right, it. Time to Google who John Goodman is. He played Sully in uh, in Monsters, Inc. And oh. Pacha in Ebers New Groove and Big Daddy LaBeouf in Prince and the Frog. Uh, White Rabbit gets around. Fate is great. Yeah, he does. He really does. He's He's because he's got a great voice. White Rabbit no longer does anything anymore. Never mind. White Rabbit's gone. White Rabbit's here and White Rabbit <laughs> left. Wow. He he had to get to his appointment. Yeah, exactly. You know, he, he wasn't hanging out long. Queen of Hearts is like, wait a second. You're you, no, you're not a hero. You're my ally. Uh, you're going to you're, you're working with me now. Get rid of him quickly. Uh, back over to Tiana's place. Spending three. Rule New Orleans going straight into that fortune. Rule New Orleans. Oh, apparently he also played a client. Uh, uh, John Goodman also played a kind old man in Cloverfield. Um, ooh, Alice over at the at the Folgy Wood is rough. Interesting. I, f I feel like sometimes I like blocking the. It is. Is it not crazy to have such insane, like magical powers and just be like, yeah, I want to rule the I just want to rule New Orleans. That's as far as my ambition goes. Exactly. <laughs> it's fun. To be fair, That's... It's not the smallest city. Yeah, ben but is working it's true. for people who want highly dense populations of souls. <laughs> uh, huh. Or I wonder if that's like, because I feel like or New Orleans potentially has a, has a bit of what is it like, especially with what the vibe they're going for the movie has a bit of that voodoo vibe, much more so than I would say L.A. does. So maybe it's just like, you know, where it's the easiest for him. Like it's it's a, it's one step uh, playing his shadow spirits directly to the discard pile to kill Mama Odie. That's my favorite play. quality right. move. Facilier is not Ooh. playing nice. <laughs> I feel like they've each gone like maybe three turns without fading so far, and we've gone pretty far already. Yeah, these are I two. I don't know enough about uh, Queen of Hearts, but I'm pretty sure Facilier is winning this war pretty That's... handily, even. Well, here's the, the issue, right? The issue <laughs> is that neither of Queen of Hearts' fate locations are especially good at actually giving her an engine to work off of. Where Facilier, because Voodoo Emporium is such a good location for him anyway, and because he has to be there anyway, uh, gives him an engine to kind of keep Queen of Hearts under wraps. Hmm, that's fair. Also, really, sorry, this is a uh, unreal point, but someone in the chat pointed out, uh, Mooch, who's currently, I believe, uh, playing... Uh, Queen of Hearts right now. Mooch has actually uh, has not lost a single match so far. 
And so if he wins here, he's going to he will have gone two weeks flawless in the league, which is a pretty solid start. That desperation getting a card out of the forge pile feels great here, too. This is a fantastic position for Facility, honestly. Oh, yeah. Speaking of Kane, ready to roll. A Yodora fantastic position Juju for Facilier. Both. That's man crazy. Who could have expected? <laughs> what do you mean? Also, also, I did. I wanted to say you said that Qu uh, Queen of Hearts doesn't have a combo location. What is the hedge maze to you? Because that's just a great location in every shape and form. Like, how is it's that a not a location? Don't get me wrong. It's a great location. Is Queen of Hearts a character that like combos? I mean, she plays a, she could put down. What is it? She can put down two card guards and turn one of them immediately. Here's like, that's pretty good. Is that a combo playing a card and activating it? That's a combo now. Um, if I went to I McDonald's mean, and ordered for, like, for like six ninety nine, maybe. Dude, could you give me some McDonald's? Actually, don't. I don't like McDonald's. Could you give me some Wendy's? Oh, um, what, what what for Wendy's? What do you want from Wendy's? Uh, honestly, a ten piece nugget. You can't go wrong. Uh, that's fair. It's not a bad play. All right. Well, uh, after uh, went to the hedge maze and got a ten piece nugget, act, uh, another card guard activated and played another one. <laughs> Where did all these cards come from? I didn't know Wendy's was serving these. They're everywhere. <laughs> it's crazy. What are chicken nuggets made of? Um, one is one assumes horse fat, but we can't confirm or deny. Um, it's made of dreams and meat. Oh. That's all I need to know. Dreams and meat. There you go. Oh, sorry. Uh, when meat is uh, there's an asterisk ne next to it. I believe it's at least 60 percent meat. Uh, Dormouse can't be shrunk. Dormouse they is had to be. They had to be desperate for heroes. For Alice in Wonderland, if this yeah. thing in a teapot got in. <laughs> what is it? And also, if you're wondering about how desperate they were for heroes, again, White Rabbit's a hero. Which also yeah, says yeah, a lot. He, he, could, he probably would be better as an ally, wouldn't he? Yes, he is. You would no. think so, but even as an ally, he was, like, part of her court very unwillingly, so... Is there anyone willing in Alice in Wonderland? Uh, the card guards uh presumably the card guards are presumably they... the king are, the they, is, are they willing the king... aren't they aren't, aren't the card guards like constantly threatened to have their heads taken off or whatever yeah but you know that's why they're so willing okay well if you say so <laughs> i mean i mean if someone said hey do this or that i'll chop your head off i'd yeah, be I'm pretty like, willing I'm to do it I'm learning all kinds of things about how dance defines words like willing and combo <laughs> and... what do you mean Okay, uh, going back over to, again, Dr. Facilia, guys, Dr. Facilia is going to fate. I didn't know if you guys were expecting that from him. The, the funny part is that there will be a point with the Queen of Hearts where fading doesn't matter anymore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so eventually doesn't, Facilia is going to have used up all of his steam. Doesn't, yeah. I mean, like... If he keeps going and none of these heroes get killed, then he just gets to Mom Wraith cycle, doesn't he? Yeah. He does. Dude, I'd love, I want to see a, quickly a quote do you, start, like, soft do you think, uh, Do you think he is going to be able to do that quickly enough to stop Queen of Hearts? <laughs> uh, I mean, depending on her draw, I think it's doable. Thus far? He's, um, he's, he's running out of non Mom Wraith's cards. <laughs> Yeah. No, this is, yeah, he, I don't, uh, what is it? I think our RJ woke up today and chose violence, I believe is what it occur is occurring here. No doubt about that. Right now. Well, I mean, uh, he's obviously Stitch, who's all about violence, so. We don't have this Captain Gontu or the Grand Councilwoman in the game. How dare you? Well, I, did you just suggest that the Grand Councilwoman would be the villain rep in Villains? She wants, or, hey, there was a custom. Let me let me speak oh, to you about dude. You really want to start an argument with that that there was a custom? I got a <laughs> lot of options for you. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. You're right. My bad. Um almost there, an evening star from uh doctor here. Or just an almost there, yeah. Just yeah, I feel like you yeah, it's just clogging up the pile right now. That's it's I feel like it's what Queen of Hearts needs to swap uh over to rather than even putting a bunch of heroes on the board, just go for overfilling the pile. I don't know if she, how much you can do against this. I don't pressure. know. I feel like heroes on the top fate to try and get any amount of 
like a turn might mm -hmm. be a little vital. Not not going to a fate here though. Yeah. Oh, uh, setting up the talisman. What should we call it? Yeah. The double. Oh no, yeah, just the playing the talisman, play, yeah. not even going for the double play. Okay. Well, pretty much all the heroes. That oh yeah, you're fine. Steal the talisman have happened. So at this point, this is almost Facilier's came to lose. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I hate saying that because Queen of Hearts is one of my go-tos. But uh, uh, yeah, Waco does want to point. Oh, uh, almost there is the play. What is it? Uh, apparently, uh, Waco wants to tell you, Chaos, that Mother Gothel has 21 losses in the, in the league and f only five wins due to the fact that you're not champion championing her right now. I would never play this draft format in Disville, so there was no hope of me playing her anyway. <laughs> there you go. That's I'm sorry, Waco, to crush your hopes and dreams, so that's what Chaos likes to do. I'm all about crushing hopes and dreams. The draft format is really interesting, and it's it seems really fun, and uh, it's it's really neat above all. However, it is um, a major deterrent for oh, he um, double people. cards will tell. That's oh, game. He yeah, doubles cards it's, will it's tell. game. Yeah, that's game. Doesn't even matter. Look at yeah. that. There's no mass here. What yeah, were you saying though before you finish oh, finish off your thought there, Chaos? Before we do much more. <laughs> oh, uh, it, it's really cool and it's neat, and I'm excited to watch other people play. But for someone like me, it's an immediate turnoff to ever wanting to participate because I would hate being forced to play as like seven different characters in this game. That's fair. No, like Facilier in Queen of Hearts, for instance. I would not want to be playing if I had to play either of these two characters. So mm -hmm. it's uh, you know positives and negatives to the whole draft thing but it is really neat and i'm excited to see people uh using it for this season of wicked league yeah no that's fair i think there's definitely people who are uh, okay you're doing that right now um hold up let me fix this I, are they undoing something what's happening right now what do they do i have no idea what's going uh, on hit rewind i don't know why why what's going on i'm just gonna reset the tape not gonna reset the table what are they doing here I'm going to delete. I'm just going to do everything real quick in the background. I don't know delete what they're them doing. All. Leave no survivors. Are they? Uh, yeah, I think it's just done. They're, just, they're trying to finish off right now. They're just lagging. I got it. I'm just going to take care of this real quick in the background. There you go. Huh. All right, back over inside of this. Here we go. So, uh, what is it? Yeah, that's the, uh, that was, uh, Zlay, Zlay saying, by the way, in response to you, Chaos, uh, that was, that was Zlay's fear about the format. I think the point of this format is find the best player overall, not the best MIM player or whatever, which is fair. That's like, fair. like, and I think that's actually one of the- I'm not saying that's wrong or anything. I'm just saying that I want no part in it. Yeah. Wait, because Waco was saying, like, why aren't you playing? I'm telling you why I'm not playing. I'm not interested in this kind of format. Yeah, that's fair. Guess what? Hey, I- I, what is it it's, it's something i've learned about you i think personally chaos is that uh just from getting to know you you like playing who you like playing and you don't really like changing that up honestly well no i find what i find fun and then if i find something fun i want to do the fun thing i don't want to do the thing i don't find fun and i don't find playing as certain characters in this game like lotso or um I really don't like Cruella. I don't, I, I, and Tremaine, I don't like. I just don't like playing as them. So, why would I ever put myself in a position to have to do something I don't find fun, you know? That's fair. Yeah, that's a very but fair other point. Other people then. are enjoying it. And, you know, if they enjoy it, then they can do it. Go for it. I'm glad they're all having I'm a good time. I'm I've sorry. Got you plenty don't, of other stuff I can do. You don't enjoy the thing I enjoy in the same way that I enjoy it. So, I'm actually, since we're on the internet, I do hate you now. Well, I hated you despite that. So okay, okay, that wasn't, my bad. that wasn't a part of my equation for hating you. This is uh, rude Ooh, behavior. Baby, Maleficent, and Evil Queen. So, um, correct, so Facilier won that, so correct me if I'm wrong. What happens here is if Evil Queen wins, then it's over. But if mm -hmm. uh, Maleficent wins, then Queen of Hearts has to beat Evil Queen or vice versa? Uh, yes. Is how this works? I'm a genius. M Mooj can't see their mover? This one? Just imagine it. Like, really hard. There we go. <laughs> TTS is, can I just say TTS is a really great program? It's fantastic. Flawless. It is a program. It's a program, to say the least. It is a program <laughs> that sometimes executes. It does sometimes. It definitely sometimes does things. <laughs> At least 80% of the time, unless it's a Tuesday 
evening when steam just has to run their server maintenance that's exactly when isn't it they couldn't run it at like 3 a.m something like that they couldn't run it like in the middle of the night for everyone no so many better times so many better times instead of hey right when people get home from work on tuesdays no and how dare you games with their friends how dare you i even suggest that i mean everyone knows they play all of their video games at two in the morning and so seven o'clock at night is a great time of course, I'm, you're awful. obviously right here. Truly awful. <laughs> Perfectly wretched. <laughs> I said the thing from the. Oh my game. gosh! The line. Ba 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 da ba. Dance, awesome. can you roll can the we... credits that I know you have set up as a scene in uh, Streamlabs, please? Yep. All right, guys. That was uh, that was it. Thank you so much, guys, for hanging out. Appreciate you guys. <laughs> <laughs> in terms of what's actually going on, why can we talk about this turn one fate for Maleficent? Yeah, that's a bit rough seeing Sneezy gut going away immediately. <laughs> Why? Uh, I do want to explain the, the objectives question. real quick, because we, uh, 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 just in case you guys aren't familiar with this. Uh, Maleficent, uh, her objective is to start her turn with a curse at each location. Curses are just a unique card type that uh, you can play at any location. It just has a, uh, a unique identifier as to you what gets are, rid of them. You guys are using the intro to evil rules, but not the intro to evil characters in this so, tournament? So you have the option to choose between intro or base, uh, or the oh, worst takes it all. So uh, when you when they are revealed in the flop, you choose then which one you're going to be using. So uh, RG, I believe that was uh, no, that was Mooch, right? Uh, who's Mal? Yeah, yeah, Mooch, is Mal, um, yeah. Mooch chose to uh, use uh, the worst takes it all Maleficent instead of the mm, interesting, other one. which is fair because <laughs> yeah. I, I genuinely think Maleficent is the only one out of Intro to Evil where the Intro to Evil version is harder. <laughs> Yeah. No, that's fair. <laughs> oh, baby. It's looking oh, that's two curses nice. Double for, uh, right away is looking nice for Evil Queen, especially with the uh, dopey out the gate. Yeah, uh was it one of you two willing to explain how Evil Queen wins the game? Just so we can get a quick understanding on that. Uh poison. Cool. Ditto, do you want to add anything to that? <laughs> so the idea is that you have to first uh collect all of the ingredients that you need to brew this poison all four unlock the dwarf's cottage find snow white and then poison her (laughs) yes you have to use you have to get enough poison and play the card take a bite which we can see on screen right now to kill snow white to kill snow white you have to um, your opponent plays her for some reason which almost never happens or you have to play the magic mirror and activate the magic mirror to get her out and she's always played to the cottage, which you have to unlock, and you unlock it by playing the four unique ingredient cards. Yes. Uh, yeah, it, it's it's a lot of stuff you have to do in order to to go for that, but that makes sense. I think I'm actually understanding why Mooch went for Maleficent and uh, Queen of Hearts here for his choices. So because Maleficent's it was just, I think it's because he likes to fate. Choice. Yeah. But, I mean, Maleficent's a top tier choice that's good against a lot. Oh. Immediate Stefan into the green fire is pretty Oof, not that's cash money. <laughs> yep. And speaking of, remember when I said each curse has a way it's discarded? Green fire uh, is discarded when Maleficent moves to that location. So King Stefan hurts. Getting forced to move to the cottage is not super great either because. No. Uh, you're going to hear the word or mm. the, the term reset location thrown around a little bit and getting thrown to your reset location at the wrong time for Maleficent. Do you want to really explain what, 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 what reset location means? Because I feel like that's something that's very that's understood a lot in the actual villainous community, but I don't know if it's understood yeah, outside of it. I'll tell so you right now, I have no idea what he's talking about. So. Perfect. Refer to the location that is game power, play a card and discard. Uh, traditionally, it's accepted that that it's the version with a game one and a fate mm-hmm. as the fourth action. But there are a few characters, Maleficent being one, uh, where her reset. We did just see him use a thunderbolt in order to uh, gain three more power with the Black of Night because that's how Black of Night works. Because she doesn't actually have a fate discard action uh, location. Now, now I do know her not having a fate discard is a, a point of contention. Mm-hmm. It is because mo- a lot of people think that a character has to have a fate discard because it's the best way like if you're in a rough spot and you need to fate your opponent you need to hit back you need to do something having that discard there gives you 
a modicum of forward momentum at the same time that kind of keeps you moving that you might not have otherwise. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Queen of Hearts is actually the other character in the game that doesn't have a fate discard location. And I think that's going to be, uh, uh, I think it's going to be thrown into these awkward situations where you have to choose between pushing more for progress with the discard actions or pushing more for the fates, which is a hard call to make for some. I do want to verify real quick to see that's just so that was clear. Uh, what is it? He, uh, we did just see Evil Queen play Black of Night in order to play Alphixia just to play two cards because uh, she, she didn't have a discard action available at her location and just wanted to get through more cards quicker. Right. And Evil Queen, you'll notice that her reset location is actually Dwarf's card. It's the one that starts locked. So in order to get the kind of momentum as Evil Queen that every other character has, you have to pull tricks like you have to try to get the Black of Night Alphixia. RJ, uh, by the way, RJ, I believe, chance. lagged and drew twice, and so I had to put some cards back in his deck because of a misclick. Oh, okay. Essentially. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> makes sense. Yeah, so this is... Right now, honestly, like, I, I, Evil Queen's got a lot, of co- a lot of her ingredients out, but... I'm, 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 a do lot you think... of ingredients and a lot of power that she's n- not choosing to invest yet. I don't, I mean, I don't think you choose to invest personally uh, as Evil Queen till late. And I think it's one of the, I think it's one of the premier strategies I've seen of her where you don't actually want to brew poison until you have to get rid of it. It's definitely not wrong. Uh, But with this much power, I would probably feel comfortable investing a little bit just to pick off a cheeky hero if it shows up. Because the last thing you want as Evil Queen is to find yourself flooded and have to waste time going to brew the poison mm-hmm. first. Like, I like pre-brewing at least a little bit, especially with this much power to spare. I, st- I personally would, but I understand that logic still. I'm glad that we're seeing Evil Queen go to the woods, though, because that's definitely something you need to do. And it looks like she's using uh, the Thunderbolt to pl- to use the ability of Old Hag's Cackle, gaining one power for each hero. Uh, what is it? Each location in your uh, realm with a hero. Uh, and then just going to discard um, a couple. Was that one or two cards? I don't remember. Not I a lot, though. Uh, and then yeah, that wasn't much. And that was it. We are seeing, um, I think Chaos AFK for a second, but uh, we are seeing his favorite card, Cackling Goon, being used effectively <laughs> to destroy uh, King's Fawn. He just loves the Cackling Goon because he loves the, its face. That's the whole reason. Uh, Evil Queen is Cackling the original Goon. Clasher, actually. Yes. Um... We're seeing, we're seeing a pickaxe and a love's first kiss. Pickaxe over on Doc there is great because pickaxe is just plus two strength, and that's oh, it hurts. Yep. E- what Evil a- Queen has given herself the space to play safe. Mm-hmm. That's just by stockpiling all of this power. Yeah, Mooch could have his first loss here. This is not looking. It's not looking great for him right now. I'm, this is not the optimal bullet. It depends on okay. There's the green fire. Okay, yeah, that's kind of still lacking an ingredient. I see for. here. Yes, I will say uh, you did just see your favorite card of Maleficent's get used. Yeah, I saw when. I mean, it's not just my favorite card of Maleficent's. It's the best card in Disney Villainous. I'm so sorry for uh, not saying the correct. Do words not there. ever disrespect Cackling Goon in my presence. I will end you. I don't worry. I did it when you weren't here, so it's fine. He's, anyway. he's just having a good time, and I love him. <laughs> uh, throwing some magic tomes down as well. Effective. So effective for uh, for the for Evil Queen, just being able to get rid of stuff. Guards. I don't think... How many dragon forms have we seen go away from Maleficent? I don't feel like we've seen a lot yet. I don't know that we have either. I know. I'm pretty sure I saw one discarded. I don't know. Does Maleficent have three or two? It's I, three, isn't three. it? I want to say three. Uh, and we are seeing Dragon Farm here. I kind of, part of me want, yeah, I was going to say, I don't know if you really should play it yet. Because I feel like if you go, over, you wait till you go to King's Fun's Castle, because Evil Queen can't fate next turn. And you can't gain back the three power. Which I think is the biggest benefit of Dragon Farm. Putting a, putting a direct fear on how, uh, on getting faded. Uh, and we are seeing, yep, that's, yeah, so Doc yeah. currently has a uh, base three strength. Yep. Plus one, uh, plus two more for pickaxe oh, and that's one why you more don't play for dragon form. Oh, that's a good play there. I like that. <laughs> that's mo- why you don't play. Play, play dragon form. Very nice. 
hitting the tomes. Let's see if we get anything interesting. That's a fair point. Yeah, dragon form isn't fate the turn, it's fate mitigation. That's a really good way to put it. Uh, but yeah, we've seen the tomes uh, getting activated right here. Can you explain to me what deterrent and mitigation mean? Because I'm wondering if you have the same definition or if it's like when you said combo earlier. And <laughs> Okay, that's fine. Uh, what is it? Uh, deterrent is just is uh, just to say, hey, this is you. Do, this is the person you do not fate. Whereas mitigation is a situation where it's just like it's just less optimal, but you still sometimes have to do it. Whereas deterrent just says no. Uh, mitigation just puts in puts a not. I don't think the dictionary a, would agree with you, but I think you got close enough. Thanks, Dad. All <laughs> right, uh, Milson going over to King Stefan's castle. Um. Oh my goodness, Mo Mooch moved to the fate location? Are you sure? Yeah, I know. It's crazy. Uh, yeah, have to spend that poison for uh, killing Doc there. <sighs> Happy sucks here, but I think... Is it Wishing Well? Is Wishing Well better right now? Wishing Well will probably cost more poison than Happy in the long run. That's fair. Yeah, because you can't do anything else on Happy. Yeah. I do like the play of separating, putting the pickaxe on uh, Dopey and then putting uh, the Wishing Well on Sleepy just to separate how much uh, you're going to put out on the board. Yep. Uh, dreamless Sleep here. Yeah, Maleficent's just pushing very hard for the objective right now, trying to go for a lot of fading. The problem with evil against fading Evil Queen is that, it's n like, fate, fate spamming Evil Queen is not effective, and Mooch loves to fate spam. Yeah, no, it does not work. Um, uh, there's oh mummy dust. There, it's again the a last ingredient. Everybody, a fate, uh, a fate mitigation tactic, not fate deterrent. Is that okay to describe to you, Cass? That was that okay? Cass, the one who said deterrent and mitigation, and now you're gonna use it for like the next two weeks, probably, as if you came up with it. I can see it in, now. In fairness, mummy dust is fate deterrent. Dragon form is fate mitigation. Really? It's only one poison. Hey, let me hit you with this. Mummy Dust is irrelevant because it won't change if you fade or not at all unless you're one poison off from Snow White, which almost never happens. That's kind of oh, what I was correct. thinking. But how is it? So it's not, I mean, it's not mitigation or deterrent, really. It's just kind of there. It's <laughs> slightly more deterrent than Dragon Form, certainly. I think um, it's probably the worst ingredient that. Who was that, it? Was uh, it Zlay? Zlay, do you see what you've done? What I have to listen to now? I'm gonna so my what I have to listen to now between the two of them about this conversation? I'm so sorry for this. Do you, is it, is, does Grumpy feel better here or do you like Bashful here? I'm always Grumpy. It's fair. Grumpy over at the Dwarf's Cottage also feels, I think, really good. Because again, if you're trying to, I'm... you want to have a bit of, you want to block some of those fates right there. Although, Yes, but... Knowing that Snow White's going to spawn at Dwarf's Cottage eventually means that Grumpy doesn't really want to be there because then he misses out on the stream. That's fair. I, I don't mind. I've been out of the Disville game for a hot minute, but I feel like I'd still put Grumpy at the top fate just to block the fate discard there. And then I mean, because I'm playing now. Maleficent, try to speed run my objective. But Mooch hasn't been speed running his objective the entire time. So not at all. Yeah. <laughs> That's kind of complacent, like I said, about Maleficent not really being able to fate and race at the same time because that fate discard plays heavy into it. Mm -hmm. uh, chat did ask, who are, who's ever, who are your guys' favorite dwarves? Uh, Grumpy. Grumpy, yeah, okay, cool. <laughs> Good talk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think yeah. I said it at the start, actually, one of the very few bits of knowledge I have of competitive Disville because I did play competitive Disville for like four months or something mm -hmm. is that Maleficent is uh, evil queen wins fast usually and Maleficent is one of the people that can like outrun evil queen and does well against evil queen because of evil queen's lack of fading early game and whatnot yeah. but that only works if you play Maleficent with the idea of don't fade of much if at all yeah. and instead speed run and Mooch has done the exact opposite of that, and I'm pretty sure it's going to lead to his first loss of this league. That's uh, that's a fair point. Yeah. What's he? Wait, how is he doing that? How did he just? Wait, how did he get rid of? Oh, he has to. Okay, he's playing down the dragon form. Running the dragon form. Okay, yeah. Think we're thinking ahead a little bit. <laughs> yep. Makes sense. Uh, make sure you spend your power for it, and he's good there. 
Yeah, putting yeah. oh Savage Goon uh, also like protecting his Fence Castle is great there too because even if you get hit with a Prince Philip, that's not bad. And we also haven't seen Maleficent draw the Raven at all yet. No, nope. which is really unfortunate for Maleficent because if you're gonna focus on heavy fate as Maleficent, you've got to have the Raven there to make up the difference. Mm-hmm. I'll... You're just you're not moving cards anymore. Yeah. Raven just honestly using the discard action is the biggest thing. Exactly. Especially if you're going to set up a green fire at one of the center locations first. Uh, he Mitch is asking Well, that's a good place to put green fire because he's never going to that location because it does not have a fate on it. So that would make. Yeah, that's probably why. Uh, how much power did he have works. beforehand? I don't remember. I want to did. I um, want to say he had four, but don't quote me. I don't think he had four. No, I think he had one. Sorry that we're verifying stuff. Hold up. I think it's only one. Sure. Right? Or no, it would be. <sighs> Give me a second. I'll pull it up. Hold up. If I can. Oh, I didn't realize until Zlay mentioned it, but we haven't seen the Raven either. Probably yeah. because of all the not going to discard locations that right, have been going exactly. on. Exactly. That's the deal is you choose to heavy fate as Maleficent, but in exchange, you're not drawing new curses very quickly. You're Second, not drawing ravens quickly. You're not drawing uh dragon forms. Kind of your way to dig yourself back out You're of all, pit. Like, Maleficent has so many expensive cards. Like, so many of them mm -hmm. are two and three cards, and you're Correct. only getting one power a turn if you're jumping fates. Correct. Like, you need the flexibility from the extra action from the Raven to be able to pull off a spam strat as Maleficent yeah. effectively. Even against somebody like Evil Queen who doesn't punch back very hard. Because it does not take much from Maleficent's fate that to cause problems. That's true, yeah. Very, she, very she true. She has one of the mo one of the hardest hitting fate decks, probably alongside Lotso. They're, uh, we're currently having them rewind stuff. They're trying to verify stuff. I'm, I'm, I'm currently the uh, judge room, so I'm not showing off hands. Cheat? No, they were. Just, I think they were just trying to verify how much uh, cost everyone had, how much cost, uh, how much power trying he had to make left. Trying sure the bookkeeping is correct. Because they, uh, I think there was an error there that was potentially missed. While they're doing that, uh, we can talk about the fact that my dogs just came into the room. They're very adorable. That's Hello, great. Dogs. What are they looking for right now? Um, potentially, <laughs> I don't know. Well, it, uh, I'm not sure. No, I'm not no, sure no, in the no. game right now. Don't sweat it. Um, Flora is over here on the table or on the floor. Flora is. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, that's there weird. We go. I think that's what they were looking for. Yeah, lag is fun. There you go. You guys want to talk about TTS being a workable program again? Should we, uh, should we beat that old dead horse program <laughs> with no faults whatsoever exactly tts is amazing and can i give you my new can i give you my new headcanon while we wait for the game to get back underway yeah uh, please. i think that cackling goon is the most will smith card in villainous will smith he's just excited yeah he's just excited and happy to be there like our good friend will smith that's counterpoint <laughs> beautiful as me Oh, that is really Will Smith. <laughs> that Can is we oh, have gosh. like the cackling goon looking at beautiful as me, like reading Don't it out loud, and that's Will. Or he's gonna do. It. <laughs> that's oh, that's a, that's a good that's a good example, honestly. Yeah. Will's Will's an artist, right? Can we get him to draw the he cackling is. goon, yeah. like holding up a mirror, like doing the Gaston pose? Who goes by the screen name Will Smith? We are not speaking about Will Smith uh, from Al Aladdin to Electric Boogaloo, as far as I know. I was Unless... talking about both. Okay, my bad. <laughs> I mean, we have. Is this never is this game back on? The by the way, room. what is I happening? They they were fixing their turns, trying to make sure, trying to fill. Uh... I think they forgot to restart the dark. There we go. All right, they're back at it. They're back at it. All right, we're back. Back again, once again. Back again. 
Here we are back in. Just have to make sure all the math checked out. <laughs> yep. See, dude, dude I is... love Flora conceptually, by the way. It's such a fun and interesting Fantastic card that card. never does or accomplishes and I'm anything. I'm a little <laughs> yeah. upset that there weren't other characters, like other heroes later that also did this. Because it really yeah. is kind of a fun... It's a neat mechanic. Yeah. Mechanic that I wish got used more. By the way, I want to point out, so uh, we did see Evil Queen use Scream of Fright to uh, move Bashful. And because of Scream of Fright, it's the exact reason that I was thinking that potentially Grumpy was uh, maybe a better idea there. Because Grumpy would be immune from Scream of Fright due to how much strength he has if there are no heroes there. Not counting Dopey's bonus. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm still of the opinion that I would have put Grumpy to the top fate, but I also would have played this Maleficent game so differently. That's fair, yeah. Uh, like, th like, this is a and this is an interesting. So, I want to see, I want to know what the thought process is here, being brave enough to try to keep going for these fates without any of your support. <laughs> Well, well, whenever when we finish off this, uh, when we when the game finishes off, we'll go. We'll jump over to their uh, voice call. We'll chat with them and and right. talk what's going on. Yeah, also, yeah. We speaking of uh, what is it actually like those unique the unique heroes like that? We do have the Flora, uh, Jasmine, Sally from uh, Oogie Boogie. Now, like all of those heroes are something brand new that we have not seen in that same likeness before. Yep. I will say Sally is one that doesn't work for everyone. Sally's uh, great. Sally could not <laughs> work. Bro, imagine Sally from Maleficent where she has two green fires around her there. <laughs> oh, beautiful. Oh, wonderful. Sally uh, oh, Sally makes it where you have to move to adjacent locations, right? Yep. Correct. I'm thinking of the right card. Yep. I really love that idea, but I feel like I would love it a lot more if it was like a character gimmick in general, more so than a one-off fate. Mm. That's fair. That's fair. That's, I will know, say... Maybe it'll I, I wish that was kind of the same logic with Flora. I th feel Jasmine's different, though, in that she reduces your hand size because Jafar actively has the way to yeah, increase Jas his Jasmine hand size. makes sense. I was only talking about Sally. I don't really disagree yeah. on, or I, I don't really agree, I mean, on Flora because I don't feel like having your hand revealed while playing could make, like, a heavy well, sort of, like, gimmick gameplay loop compared to adjacent movement. Like what you could do with like though, fate effects and other card effects, etc. Imagine a character whose gimmick is all about building poker hands. Like building okay. combos with pairs and three of a kinds and stuff. And then you have stuff in the fate deck that's all about revealing, kind of revealing what the next combo is, what the next hand is, what you're going for. It would be mm -hmm. really fun. Because you, you can watch it. that... I should do it. I should do it. <laughs> I think you've talked about that a couple times. I'm actually surprised that you hey, haven't it's yet. Doc. There you go. Doc's back in here. We, he's got to have Magic Mirror in his hand, right? I feel like at this point he has to, right? If he there's must. nothing left. We haven't seen it. And unless yeah. he... Unless he... T like, Magic Tone... Honestly, by the way, started, like, with Doc, that? I would, like, block the mine here, right? right? Now, to stop the play activate? Yeah. Yeah. Block the activate. I would block the play activate because now probably what I would do if I was Evil Queen is go to mine, get what's your face out, mm -hmm. then then poison, then dock, yeah. then hopefully Snow White right after. Yeah, 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 yeah. I yeah, agree. that's fair. No, okay. Yo, that yeah, yeah, yeah really hit me with the meow, 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 meow. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? <laughs> you know uh, what? Fair enough. Oh, you know what? I don't mind. That's actually a really solid play. You you immediately uh, take a bite out of Doc. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's fine. really smart. That's fine. Ooh, yeah. I like that. That's actually really cool. The there. mirror is so important, though. Mm -hmm. Like, is, I don't know how many turns I'm willing to delay that. Is um, wait a minute. Is the item dropping one like a possibility right now? Item dropping hero. Yeah, uh, yeah, the I hero think, Sneezy's now yeah, right now. Sneezy's, yeah, Sneezy is back in there. Sneezy and was Woodland in the first phase. creatures fate. are possible, possible right now. Yeah. I would have, I would have immediately mirrored. Yeah, it, I would be so worried really about risky. Woodland creature, and you can't afford to just play it out because Sneezy or whichever one it is could come out. Yeah. There's oh, the Woodland there's, creatures. Yeah. That's what you're talking about. Woodland creatures. Yeah, yeah. I would Woodland creatures immediately. Gone. That's yeah. very easy. Gone mirror. That. That yeah, hurts. yeah, I would have. I like killing Doc was very neat, but I absolutely would have been like, because interesting you gotta get thing, played. Evil Queen, one of the 
a minority of characters in this game that doesn't really have a good uh, discard pile tool. So well, other to be than fair, what is it? Tomes, black magic. Like, black magic is a is black magic. Yeah, now now you have to tomes to black magic. Get black yeah, magic and then do it. Black magic is a. It doesn't matter if it's a it's a discard. It's a, it's not a specific discard searching tool. It's just black magic right. is just whatever you want tool at this point. Right, but like she does like evil queen. Like that's her only option, and one of those she never. Ooh, does that. she used black of night to activate the tomes again. That's a really effective play. I like that. I like it. I like magic tones. You, you gotta dig that hard. You gotta dig that hard for it. Magic, no, magic tomes, tomes is a fun is card. It's yeah. a good card. Actually, great. It's it, it's the it's they're good I, cards, Bron. If you need card, if you need cards, you're good. Then it's yeah, it's essential. Just getting rid of another magic tome. Uh, getting rid of another magic tomes here. How he just again he just got rid of seven cards right there. It looks like. Yep. Or no, he got rid of six technically with double magic tomes. Like that's so good. I still feel like he would have been in a better position if he let Doc sit for a turn. And I think he would have, yeah, because he could have mirrored immediately though. Because he could have used the mind. Like he, I'm I, either he wasn't thinking about that or he has he has a different plan in mind there. But all entirely fair. I mean, I'm gonna be honest. I'm looking at Maleficent's board, and I think he can afford to dilly dally yeah, a little like, bit. Like, I said, like yeah. I said earlier, he's given himself a space to play safe yeah so i can kind of see it but at the same time like that might be a bit too safe <laughs> that's fair oh i was hoping we would see uh your uh cast's favorite card here but it i looks... love cackling goon no how, how did you know i was talking about them that's insane because it's the best card in disney villainous there's not even like there's not even a competition or a contest or anything it's like oh wow What's the difference between a competition and a contest in that situation? Uh, one of them is longer than the other one by like a syllable. Okay. Um, oh, Aurora. Aurora here. into Stefan and make Mooch forfeit, please. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that would be so sad, though. Well, sort of oh, truth, really. So, actually, sort of truth. Sort of truth. Honestly, is not bad. Yeah. honestly, that's that's entirely fair. Because you can because yep. currently yep, yep, yep. Maleficent cannot move without getting rid of uh, the green fire. Cannot move any uh, curses. And Prince Philip's already a struggle. That makes it. Oh wow! Although the the uh, one savage drawback, goon is the only thing that gets Mooch out of this like nightmare scenario right now. Yeah. Uh, no, he has it's seven strength. He could also use uh, the cat the not the cackling goon the other one. The other one is two, isn't it? Isn't it two uh, strength or is base it three? three uh, two cost oh, it's three base strength. three. My mistake. Yeah. So this is that still one, a rough spot. Right I thought right it was right. two, and it got one from the curse. What am I thinking of? It's I think it's two three, and it gets one from curses. Oh really? It gets to four? Dang! I think so. Buff. It can get. It can be a buff boy. You can tell I haven't played Disville in Sinister Goon. When was the last time I played Disville with you, Dance? <laughs> uh, there you go. Yeah, it's been a second. <laughs> uh, forbidden. Yeah, dude. Mo Mo Mooch likes dude, fading. This is this is Maleficent's favorite. Maleficent I, loves this. Actually, Chain one fate. <laughs> dude, sneeze, sneezy. Right now, you get rid of the tomes. Stop him from searching. Honestly, yeah. I mean, that's about all you've got, but like... You could put Grumpy out just to block gotta... an action, but it's not going to... Okay. I don't... Sooner or later, you have to play a curse, right? So you said okay, but I don't think okay. That's fair. <laughs> this I'm is trying just to... another This is just another move to the stack. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, who cares? I mean, yeah. Yeah. No, because that's why, that's why I like the idea of Sneezy, because it actually immediately has an impact, but... It, it, it does something grumpy does yeah. a, I, like d grumpy literally does nothing like grumpy doesn't even help snow white one more strength is not going to make the difference on snow white and sneezy would also do the same thing in terms of making snow white stronger yep and that by the way that is that is it they can't do anything else here timers over just he needs to finish that action there you go that, that that's the rough part about the timer and that you, after that minute and a half yeah, you, I like you don't get anything else there I like chess timers better. I personally I really well. like being able to take a lot of time. Like I like being able to store my time essentially so I can really take it on important turns and stuff. I agree. But you're right. The timer is the timer. He's got to That's you got to live with that. Mm -hmm. 
Um, what happened while you were watching Taco Bell propaganda? Uh, we just uh, Grumpy was played over to the laboratory. Getting rid of uh, black, got magic. The black magic. So I'm assuming he got Look one. Look at that then? go. Yeah. Look at him go. No, he put it in his hand and he's playing it right now. Oh, okay. Sneezy's gone. He can just play the mirror and be safe. Yeah. Yeah. I will say this is, but this is exactly why because he was able to use those magic tomes if he hadn't played. If he had, if he had put uh, Sneezy over at the magic tomes location, uh, tomes the, would have been gone. It would have stopped. It would have at least bought another turn of digging, if not more. Yep. Well, well this we'll might see. have actually. Okay, staff. staff isn't terrible. I can see it. Well, it's terrible if he doesn't use it to play curses. This is which he's I, kind of been allergic to this entire game. Fair. I feel like Staff is the most balanced of like those power reducing cards. Really? I think so, because it only it hits only effects and curses. Everything else may, is it, it just turns into a swing, like when we were talking about uh, Hades earlier. If he doesn't have pain or whatever the panic, I think it's panic. I don't know if he doesn't have panic. if he doesn't have that one, then it's just he loses immediately. But M Millicent does not need the staff. However, she appreciates it's like. Is he discard? Why is he the, discarding green fire? The, but yeah, that, that's why. Advantage nice to the jealousy. staff is that it means that you can invest more in your allies without feeling too bad about it. Mm -hmm. It's less mandatory than Hades because everything in Hades' deck costs his immortal soul. Everything in Hades' deck feels bad to play. <laughs> yeah. But despite how funny it, it's just a nice convenience. It's a convenience. Mm -hmm. Same with spinning wheel. Yep, stopping the vanquish into the top fate. Yeah, I get that. I, I'm, I'm like, you know, I feel like this is a pretty easy coast for Evil Queen at this point. It is. It has been since probably turn three. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't say Evil that Queen... to, like, knock anybody, but man, it's been... Well, because I do think, like... I feel like it's a situation of, it's, of the... It, it, the game's showing where you need to balance and why the value in this game comes from focusing your objective and also deterring other people. Because again, it's, we have, the game's been going for 25 minutes approximately and there's currently one curse on the board and I think there's been maybe one before it from Maleficent. Because there was she's... one other green fire earlier that got Correct. Stefan's top and deck. And a dreamless sleep that got Florida. True, you know oh, what? There, yeah, were yeah, yeah, the there were two others. There were two others. Yeah, yeah. But, but that's but where I... still, like, you're not going to win as Maleficent by, you know... Nickel and diming your opponent. Thank mm -hmm. you with the Raven. All the right, Raven. now you have a chance. That Raven might actually save him? It might. Mm -hmm. I will say because the Raven is powerful in just in that front. If because the biggest danger to Evil Queen now is just time. It's going to take a couple of turns, and with all the fate actions that have come out, uh, probably closer to three turns for Evil Queen to actually get set up properly, mm -hmm. and that might be enough time. Is Doc uh, on with the field Raven right now? Gaining power. Doc is not on the field, I don't think. Doc is not on the field right now? Is he, is he one of those Doc two cards? Is or is he in the no, I think he's discarded. Doc's in the discard. He's in the discard? Yeah. Top fate blocked, gain one fate over there. Has to take care of Merryweather at least. I f oh, gosh. Uh, here's the, guards he could plus, the guards plus Prince Philip means that... Uh, Okay. Uh, Love's kiss can take him out of Wincon. I'm, I'm still Maleficent, feeling pretty heavy. Maleficent would have had to double play curses this turn to catch up i will say i'm i will say actually in defense of uh Melissa here she can dragon form and uh or she can dragon form and play another ally here in order to defeat potent uh dragon form play another ally in order to defeat both the guards and prince philip here potentially yeah so she she still could maybe she has it in hand but but like yeah she could get another fade off no. and that would be her entire turn yeah you gotta get, you gotta get some. Well, cause no, cause she could, no, she would bank. She could uh, potentially, if she, if the Raven, let's say, moves to Briar Rose Cottage, plays a, uh, what is it called? Plays a dragon form to get yeah. rid of the guards. Then she yeah. goes over to uh, the the castle, plays yeah. another ally, defeats Prince Philip, getting rid of two yeah. heroes from her board, two big ones. Also gaining, that's a lot of strength, to, gaining a lot of power too because of the spinning wheel, and then performing another vanquish action or fate action. Yeah, still it. not playing curses, which was Ditto's original point. You know what? Fair. That's totally fair. 
Yeah, like she the double curse play would have, I think, given Maleficent the time. But I, I I don't think Maleficent is gonna have time at this point. Especially is... with a discarded green fire as it is to stop yeah. this. I don't know what what are they doing? D turns over. Uh Doc's on top of the fate deck. This or Oh happy? R RJ RJ is like, he must be a really nice guy to let Mooch keep making different decisions here with his time being out for like 20 seconds. Yeah, a little bit. If, uh, a competitive game, I would have told Mooch like, sorry, bud. <laughs> you no, it's fair. You gotta play right. Secondarily, did he... Okay, he chose so... happy over Doc, yes. It's not... I don't hate that actually, though. I mean, I think it means one, it's game. Two, here, one, two, right? three, four, five, nine. Uh, one, I mean, two, conceivably... Four, five, because Snow White's she only got what is it? Is Dopey out? Still... So that's two. Oh no! Yeah, she has. Three, oh, no, she is four, five. Six. You had to do she's Doc at... there. That was a loss. One, two. Yeah, yeah. she's at ten. How would you give up Doc? I don't know. I'm, I'm at, okay. If if this is game here, I I'm, he's we holding have... a take bite, be, right? It might be off by one. I don't want to um, do all of this. How did Grumpy four, move? Five, six. Oh God! How did seven, Grumpy move? Eight, eight I have of no fourteen. Idea. Gosh, I mean, we may have missed that. Sorry. There's so much stuff happening in these last couple turns. We're trying to figure out why Happy is on top. How does uh, Happy remove uh, Suffian? Is he it for a hero? Yeah, I don't think it's going to be enough here. Um, how much... You needed to do this way sooner, brother. This is it. Unless he unless he doesn't have Take a Bite. Three, but I think if four, we counting... I'm not certain, but I don't... Eight, I don't think it's going to... Snow White's nine, only 8 strength right now. 2, 3... You would have had to. I think he has exactly him. enough poison that if Happy gets played, he can still exactly. take a bite out of Snow White. Yeah. yeah. No, you don't. You don't have to get those curses I think out it's a lot literally sooner, perfect. Two. I think Snow White would be at nine, and he would lose five poison. Yeah. Yeah. Does it? Okay. Yeah, there it is. Also, he just took a bite anyway. Yeah. He did take a bite there, but I think that that's it. That's it here. My man. I'm not so. Mooch, Mooch likes being able to fade a lot more aggressively. I want to verify. We'll, we'll go over to them, check out. Yeah, they had Dragon Form and that Sinister Goon. So if so, so that turn, we'll, we'll, we can go over them in a second. Um, if he had played, if he had went over to uh, the castle instead, he could have defeated Prince Philip and uh, used the Dragon Form. And uh, if Doc was on top, he could have stopped this uh, win here potentially. But I don't. Let, uh, let's go. Let's jump in there. I really want to talk to Mooch about the the game style he prefers and understand a little bit more yeah, of that because I, I feel like, uh, what is it? I don't I don't understand that one as much. And it's gonna be. I want to get his get perspective. Yeah. Let's let's go, let's go talk to him real quick. Um, playing at hey, five a.m. Hey guys. His time. Hey, what's up? I know hey. it, I know it's early for you. My apologies. Uh, what is it? We just wanted to come and talk with you guys after that game right there. Um, what is it? The first th the first question I think we 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 have and it's directed towards uh, Mooch. Uh, Mooch, mm -hmm. what? So you prefer you prefer fading a lot more. It it looks like than progressing your objective. What was the logic in uh the in the balance there? Well, I think I would have pulled it off if I got the raven a lot sooner. The very That's, bottom of the deck is yeah. really rough. Yeah, it, I will say because yeah. to balance that out, you, your raven's at the bottom of the deck, but also magic mirror was at the bottom. So it was it balanced itself out in that way, but. Yeah, I mean, if I got, like, a lucky draw, I actually could have won, like, next turn if I had, like, two curses regardless. Right, you, mm -hmm. you needed the triple curse there yeah. in the end. Yeah. Just didn't didn't quite get get it quick enough. What was the, what was the, um, why was, did you put Happy on top instead of uh, Doc right there with Love's First Kiss? Well, I couldn't fade him either way, so it didn't really matter. But I assumed if I did get someone, I could at least discard always poison. Can I and actually? I want to yeah. ask this. I want to ask this question because I was looking at your. I was looking and trying. We were trying to figure out what well, like potential plans here. What was your hand uh, before this turn started? What was your hand? Was it just this? Because I think you also played Sinister Goon. Um, yeah, I only had like two curses, so I couldn't play up to four anyway. So was it was your hand this right here? I think is what it may have been, or maybe swapping Dream of Sleep with the Forest it of Thorns. It was this. It was this Forest of Thorns. So okay. it was yeah, pretty much this. It sucks. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> It's just really bad luck. It's I a was rough one. To I will figure out the entire time. Can, you can fade here, can't he? With yeah, Raven can play Dragon Form and then yep. Sinister Goon into the Savage Sinister Philip kill. Yep, that was exactly. Uh, yep. So wait, wait say that again. What I miss? So if you, you moved... used the 
if you use the Raven to play Dragon Form to kill the guards, you then move to your top fate, play uh, Sinister yeah. Goon, Vanquish, get a ton of yeah, power yeah, refund, yeah, and then yeah, fate. Yeah. Well, you gotta learn the hard way, don't you? That's I think fair. I pretty much yeah. just, like, it, it do be that way end. sometimes. It honestly do be. But no, like those were you uh you had some very impressive stuff. I will say your board was struggling and especially we're gonna go back to I wanna go back to the Queen of Hearts game there. You were struggling there. Uh, yeah, the Queen of I Hearts game I makes me sad. Faster at her, but I I got my my first card guard like like halfway through the deck. Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. That, that um, was just a bad time. I will say though as well, uh, like RJ, you you've definitely played those games very effectively. Like that was that was some quick discarding there. I want, uh, what is it? Because we also wanted to ask. I think you. What was the? Well, oh yeah, wait, wait. How did you move Grumpy that last turn? That very last, like the turn before you won. I think. I we missed that. I used. I used. Um. Um. I'll fix you. Oh, you moved. Okay, did makes you sense. Oh, we missed. Okay, that's what we missed. All right. Yeah, we we missed it. Sorry, we were just yeah. weird. Uh, and then also, what was so? Because when you went to go kill Doc that first time, you had your magic mirror in hand, right? No, I never had the mirror in hand. I got it to play it. You I had, had a mirror all... in my hand, right? The the turn before Mooch stole it. That's when I got the mirror. So yeah, that was good yeah, timing. Okay. I had so I had the mirror for one turn in my hand and then he played woodland creek to get rid of it and then i kept digging yeah. to get um uh, with mm -hmm. the black black magic that's fair yeah i'll say th these were very impressive in, in matches. the word sorry go ahead okay so you oh, talk go ahead. no you go ahead i was gonna I was make gonna... a stupid joke go ahead i want to hear the joke now <laughs> i was gonna say in the words of a, a wise man once said it do be that way sometimes <laughs> that's yeah true. yeah 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 it was a pretty good flop like the ba it was a really good balance of characters yeah Annoyingly good matchups. <laughs> yeah, actually, uh, uh, if we talk about that, well, uh, what was the logic there, uh, Mooch? Because uh, with going for Maleficent first, because one of the things again, <laughs> I've, I've said before, I really enjoy the the flop first. It's one of the things I first try to figure out, especially if I go second, trying to figure out who my who my opponent's going to be banning, and you ban uh, you banning Hades, but then choosing Maleficent first threw me for a bit of a loop, and I was interested in that. W you want to explain a little bit of that logic there? Because I really did enjoy well, this. Well, it wasn't my bad choice, it was his. Oh, okay. Uh, but yeah, that was a fair call because, yeah, Hades was a horrible character in general. Yeah. I think I actually chose Mal because he psyched me out. He said, oh, I'm going to choose Mal first. <laughs> that was annoyingly good. <laughs> oh, we went for the mind plays there, RJ. I respect that. I think I was actually going to go well, for uh, if, 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 if anyone, <laughs> If anyone knows me, yeah. Mal is one of my least favorite characters. <laughs> that was beautiful. Yeah. That was pure Oh, mind wow. Play. Yeah, That's... played pretty damn well, but I think That's... I could have won that if I was Raven a lot sooner. So it was really just bad luck. Uh, yeah, hey, I guess get um, guess what did that wise man say again? It do uh, be that yeah, way. Luck, yeah, it do be that way. You know, remember, remember earlier when you said something about Queen of Hearts and how like, oh, there's no table talk that can help in this one. It sounds like table talk like really T did. Table it this talk game. did actually save the day this time, but for a completely <laughs> That's different crazy. reason. That's crazy. That's great. <laughs> yeah oh, i think the what is it the table talk i think really matters i think a lot and i think that's actually that's interesting that there's a whole different aspect we weren't aware of in this uh in this game because we of course weren't there that's cool yeah, yeah. i forgot how overpowered a facilia is in these uh, new rule formats i just couldn't fade block him like ever mm -hmm. so that's why facilia is a tough yeah that's that's the move. part that's part of Villainous, I think that's enjoyable, where you have to figure out the balance between fading a whole lot and potentially rushing your own objective there. And it's it's difficult trying to figure those out oftentimes, but I think this was really effective to see. Mooch, you, you've done great here uh, thus far, but I'll ask uh, RJ. RJ, Mooch has gone undefeated this, uh, what is it, thus far this season. You knocked him off his pedestal. Oh, no. How did you... I forgot you, about that. Uh, I'm, I'm used to doing that on streams. Oh, I did okay. that last season with Zach Vincent. Uh, you do well under pressure then. So uh, that's not that. This is not a pressure to me. There it you go. Just, more I knew his strategy from the beginning. I knew Mooch likes to fate very often. So my ideal goal was get my board as clean as possible. Yeah. Mm. So that that was my it, that was my goal off. for both games. Not about that. And get it as clean as possible. And you know. Yeah, it was pretty rough getting both pickaxes on heroes I didn't care about. Yeah. That's just terrible fading. 
No, there were definitely yeah, uh, some uh, there were definitely some rough fading right there. But it sounds like you guys. It fa- sounds like there was was it? I think Mooch went into this with uh, what is it? With just the typical competitive Disneyville's mindset. But RJ, sounds like you had a did a, a bit of a psychological warfare that you started playing before even the first before even the first uh, power was gained, and that's pretty interesting to me. Mm. So, yeah, well, I also had the magical magical Doctor Facilier shirt on that I have. Uh, oh well, uh, okay. Well, no. We, well, if you if we knew that, we would have banned you. Sorry, that's that. Oh gosh, you were doing that. Did, did you have your yeah. big red battleship ready to go? Oh, uh, I I did not have the big red battleship out. Okay, well then he's he's allowed then. We don't need okay. to ban him. You're right. My, my little one year old broke it, so I have to rebuild the big red battleship. It, hey, in in the words of a wise man, <laughs> it do be that way sometimes. Yeah, the third time. <laughs> yeah no but you seriously you guys both played really effectively right there that was interesting to, it was, was really good. interesting to see those games those were really cool uh i was Castillo, yeah, you guys have any other points on this right not good like games guys good games well done yeah yeah sure all right no you guys did great uh we'll leave you guys to keep chatting thank you guys so much for doing some stream and uh wish you guys the best of luck in the league cool thank you uh, well, of course guys well let's move back over to the voice call um There we go. That was no. Uh, no. You're not waiting. You're in here now. <laughs> oh, I didn't didn't want to join me in waiting room. I uh, they were was the... literally my finger was moving to click waiting room and then I No, I knew it. To... I knew it. Dance room was <laughs> But those were really those were really impressive games to see. That was really uh, interesting to see the now, way that whole thing played out. Knowing that it was just the worst luck imaginable, I can kind of understand the maleficent plays, but mm-hmm. I'm I'm actually blown away by rj's like how much he went there it was the whole jedi thing like you don't trick. like the jedi mind tricks and the whole fact of like you don't play the villain you're playing the other you're playing someone else like that's who else you Correct. were playing no, he, wasn't that... pl- he didn't look at those games as if he was playing against uh as if he was playing against queen of hearts he didn't look as if he was playing against um Lifson. he played against mooch and it sounds like he played it really effectively and that i think is the defining not just of competitive villainous but just competitive sports games everything yeah. That ultimately is kind of the pinnacle you want to reach, where you're not playing against the game, you're playing against the player. Mm-hmm. I remember was it when I when I my first time in the league. Uh, I don't know if you guys knew this about me. Uh, here's a little secret. Um, I'm a kind of I'm a kind of qu- uh, goofy, quirky fella. Um, like y'all. <laughs> that, that uh, the word uh, who that likes, describes it? I don't know. I don't know the right word. Uh, what is it? I uh, and I consistently made jokes in my first games in the wicked league and i just i wouldn't shut up apparently guys i know again can't believe this about me um but it was so much so that my opponent thought that i was making fun of them and doing everything very maliciously and i got told off by it (laughs) and so i had to walk it i've I've walked it back from now on when if i whenever i play but it's one of those it's one of those things where it matters a lot legitimately uh, and I think that's very interesting to see I've, I, uh, yeah. how RJ was able to do that so effectively there. But those were really great games there. That was uh, first. Uh, was it first of all, uh, being able to watch through. Sorry, hold up. Um, make sure I have this correct. Yeah. Uh, first of all, make, making sure that we could watch uh, Wonderful and Jim Dandy. Rough Radigan matchup. Uh, Chaos, I know you weren't here for that part, but uh, Radigan was struggling, especially that first game. And then the second game, uh, what is it? Mooch tried to go for a bit of a different strategy there, whereas RJ came ready for that strategy and more. And very effective, all of that. So that was uh, interesting to see. You guys have any other thoughts on those games in total, though, just us here? I don't have thoughts. Ditto. Understandable. All right. Um... Let this be a lesson to anybody who's watching and like aspires to join something like this to do your research ahead of time because in both of these instances we we had kind of moments where um it was as much game knowledge as it was almost psych like psychological stuff like with this mind mind trick here at the very end yeah you just know what all tools are at your disposal going in because you there's a lot of hidden stuff you can use to your advantage in a in a game like this you just it's... just ha- <laughs> better to play with a full hand i guess <laughs> that's fair yeah 
Well, I uh, appreciate that, guys. Thank you so much for hanging out during this. Hope you guys did enjoy. Uh, and we'll see you guys. Was it? We'll be back again next week. I think Saturday we'll be doing instead of Friday, though. Uh, but still, thank you guys so much for hanging out during this. It was an absolute blast. Uh, thank you guys. Thank you, too, for co-commentating. Thank you, everyone, for watching. And we'll see you all later.